What's up, sweaties? Episode 43, Collider's Heroes is coming at you right now. I'm John Schnepp. Welcome to the world of heroes and villains. We're going to talk a lot about a very certain character because we got a very specific guest coming with us right now. Let's just get right to it. We got Rob Liefeld in the house. Thanks for being hey, here, thank Rob. You. Thanks for having me. Thanks and for having uh, me, yeah, he's our very special guest. And we've got, as always, the master of hot toys, the Star Trek aficionado, Robert Meyer Burnett. Free enterprise, yo. Thanks. Thanks. Good to be here. By the way, how cool is it? That Ryan Reynolds took a picture with his own hot toy of oh, Deadpool. Dude, I What's it like? Out. Oh, it was awesome. It was, and, and also a little jealousy. Like, I, I need that toy, Ryan. Why do you have it? I need it. Right? Yeah. I was thinking the exact crazy. same thing. Right. That's no, not been released toys, yet, right? No, 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 no. And Hot Toys is very cool. They sent me their their newest one, like before it shipped, and I'm like. Oh, I got that one, so I guess it's okay that Ryan got this one. <laughs> no, can it, you get me on their his, list, by the way? I mean, can I get on their Hot Toys no, list. When he put that up. I did. I, I freaked. That yeah. was so cool. Hot was toys, cool. please contact us, and we need you. We need you to be sending free toys to Robert Meyer Burnett because he promotes you more than anybody. And anybody, send me the other ones. But uh, anyway, let's get right into it. Let's talk about some Deadpool mania. That's what's going on right now, it's sweeping the entire world. Yes. With a week left before the first superhero film of 2016 opens, we've got a cubic ton of Deadpool viral marketing and pre-movie mayhem to enjoy. From the breast cancer exam commercial to Ryan Reynolds cracking us up on the Graham. Norton show from across the pond. Now we've got Deadpool giving away chimichangas at the Super Bowl with a new special trailer to debut, I hope, and all of us seeing this film in IMAX this week. What's happening? Let's talk about Deadpool. Yo, let's Robert Meyer Burnett, let's start off with you. Deadpool this week. It's well, been relentless marketing. I, I have to say that that first of all, you know, you pointed out earlier on social media that Deadpool had a toy, one of the first toys when he early on, like yep. in 92, right? Yep. I never have thought, I never would have thought when you took over and on New Mutants mm -hmm. and created these characters that we would see a movie like this. Not only a movie where an R-rated action comedy superhero film that is now doing breast cancer and uh, scrotal cancer, <laughs> right. ball cancer awareness. <laughs> check and, your and balls. I, I mean, check your balls. A, a hashtag. Mm -hmm. now, now, on one hand, you have a socially irresponsible, R-rated, hard-hitting <laughs> action comedy that we can't wait to see that's also socially conscious. That's right. And perhaps is literally Ryan Reynolds and Deadpool are saving lives. I think would, so. Would that have ever happened other than outside of the four color pages of what you had I, yeah. drawn? It, look, this this movie on every level has exceeded every expectation. I, I, I kid you not. You know, from the, uh, the day the screenplay dropped uh, from Rhett, Reese, and Paul Wernick, and I kept turning the page going, are they saying this? Are they really doing this? Uh, some of the most imaginative action sequence Se sequences, um, some very adult content, and I was like, "This is so fantastic!" It just had a different flavor from day one, and 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 to find out that okay, that movie's done, they made it, it's excellent, and then to be in on all this marketing, uh, there's a team at Fox that works with Ryan, and those guys uh, have come up with this content that's blowing your mind. Uh, uh, Ryan conceives of a great deal of it. They. The other guys, they, they have some great ideas too that they that they shoot around, and I mean, everybody's a gamer. I have never seen any any movie marketed like this. And no, yes, it is an absolute ever. kick. Yeah. It's an abs, you go, what do they come up with tomorrow? What are they, I mean, uh, the the Halloween with the kids on the swing set, the oh, X-Men, so that is still like, I, it slays me every time. His delivery with those kids is so fantastic. And that's when you kind of knew like, we're in for something really different. Do so. you see this? I mean, as the <clears throat> fact that they're using social media, I think it's probably the most innovative. It's a transmedia yes. campaign. They're always everyone's talking about transmedia, but yeah. I've never seen anyone really get it. And it working. And it working the way it is now. I mean, the way they've taken what the character became in the comics and yes. breaking that fourth wall, the oh, old Merc with it, the mouth, but then level. actually applying it. Yes, it, it's it's next level. I mean, I was doing an interview the other day, and one of the guys said. Ryan Reynolds has uh, Daniel Day Lewis, like this role, like he is <laughs> Deadpool. He, I, we know he has become that. The, the guy, the reporter, was convinced that since the movie stopped, he hasn't stopped being Deadpool. Is Ryan Reynolds also <laughs> cobbling shoes on the yeah. side? Is there? <laughs> so I mean, part of me is like, that's a great compliment that people are so swept up into this, his persona, and and I mean, I've I've heard the other guys in the production. I mean, Ryan gets such a kick being this character, and let's be honest. 
he's the only guy to ever well, pull this off. That guy is a natural a comedian, yes. and he's so naturally funny. Absolutely. Just watching him on the Graham Norton show, like I was saying, oh. just him riffing about like his get, getting his backpack stuck when he was like, you know, kind of stalking this girl from high school. Yep. He's just naturally funny, so he you is. could see that he's enjoying this much more than like, hey, you're Green Lantern. It's yes. cool to be Green Lantern, yes. but this is just him being this able was to have always, fun. This always suited him the very best, and it's such. Uh, you have to understand. Um, I love Rhett Paul. Tim and Ryan, these are great guys. They are solid, rock solid guys, super talented guys. And the fact that they got this chance and when Fox pulled the trigger and said, go forward and we're gonna make it an R, they never relented. And I mean, from the testicles mm -hmm. to the breast exam <laughs> to, I mean, it's just green light. I'm it's glad you light. gestured to me with the breast exam <laughs> part, you it's with the stop, testicles. Stop. Stop. But, but it, it's everything is on the table and they're they're just going for it and and leaving, they're, they're leaving nothing behind and, and, and it shows and again, I've got I've got teenage kids who are coming home from school with their buddies, telling them all about it. So I know it's connecting. I have a lab at home. I have 12, 13, and fifteen, and so they <laughs> That's go the into lab, the, yeah, and, and they come back and they tell me what's going on, and they tell me what their friends are saying. And you know, it's just it's just fun to. I, I I'll, I'll be honest. I'm gonna be sad when the movie opens because the marketing is gonna end. No, it's not gonna end because then it's Deadpool 2, then it's X Force. This it's thing Deadpool is Deadpool and Cable. This is gonna create an entire brand new adult genre of superhero films that are rated R and they're for adults. I, and I, I think it's gonna do. I it. believe that. I, I I absolutely 100%. And I think anyone who sees the film, I've seen it a couple times now, and I'm telling you, as we discussed earlier, <clears throat> my generation when we were teenagers, we grew up on Terminator, Alien, Aliens, yep. uh, Total Recall. Uh, uh, Robocop these are all R-rated movies I didn't see a movie that wasn't R Road Any, Warrior ba also the good comedies like yeah. I love Beverly Hills Cop Correct. Yep. and that was a body R-rated action comedy yep. It has a great car chase, truck chase yeah. at the beginning. And all of us were like 11, 12, 13. We all saw those yes, movies yeah. in the theater. Because they were yeah. on cable endlessly, and you'd watch them because it was new. Yes, you know, yes. Your parents would be gone. You, they didn't know what oh, you were watching. My, so my wife, she's she's hilarious. She's very funny. She went and saw this and came out. And on the drive home, she goes, hey, Rob, you know how you said you went and saw Star Wars again and again and again, the original, and you watched different areas of the cantina, which I did, because I wanted to see those aliens this time. Because sure. George, and I was convinced it was a Where's Waldo. You got to come back and find more aliens, and because it's just not enough time. And she said... People are going back to this movie to catch all the one-liners. They are fast and furious. Oh, there are so many jokes, and that lip is on fire. I mean, he has a wit about him. The, Ryan, Paul, and Rhett, th th that is some next-level com comedy genius. Wow. I mean, these guys are funny. It's very exciting. We're, it's, me and Robert are seeing it tomorrow okay. night. We're going to be I'm there. I'm going to be there. I'll so see you with you. It's a very secret yeah, IMAX I can't wait. I can't wait to talk to you afterwards. Yeah, I cannot we're, we're wait. Gonna geek you out are going it. to go to the next I mean, level. I'm excited to see it. I haven't even seen it yet. Right. You know, well, so. yes. You know, also... This is, I think, what I'm fascinated by is you have a, a talent like Ryan Reynolds, yes. who was in Wolverine Origins playing Deadpool, right. didn't go as well as he might we'll have We'll get hoped. to that in a little bit. Okay, but I, you know, he, he, as you don't see an actor, he did that test shoot, didn't he? There was a test shoot done for this version the, of Deadpool. The, the, the they, proof of concept footage. Proof yes, of concept yes. footage. He agreed to do that. Yep. You know, and, and he's really championed this film. Yes. He's really made it into his own. What's that like for you as the creator of the character? And you don't really see that kind of dedication from an actor that sort of, they force the studio into letting him, it's a minor investment as far as they were concerned monetarily, if you look at what other studio mm -hmm. movies cost, like Apocalypse. Sure, sure, sure. Um, and yet everybody's really stuck to their guns and made this thing happen. And I'm really fascinated because it doesn't happen like this at a studio anymore. I tell people, people don't understand, when, when you can go back to the day that Deadpool was announced, it says Ryan Reynolds, Starring and producing. And that little producing line, fans, means that he had his fingers in all, all parts of the pie, and he's a reason why the movie is so special. He never gave up. He, he stayed strong. Uh, and again, when, when Fox decided to go forward, they have um, let him do his thing. I, I was on set. I saw in between takes him huddle with Tim Miller, everybody at the camera, at the monitor afterwards, and they discuss uh, what was going forward. And, he, and you realize, Ryan's been doing this almost two decades, maybe, 20 years, 15 years, and he's got a lot of knowledge, and he knows exactly the kind of product he wants now, and he, they, let, they let him make the kind of movie. How it feels, watching him be Deadpool is like, I mean, it's bonerific, man. I mean, come on. <laughs> it is boner. <laughs> when he's in costume, he's and you're like, that's my drawing running around, and he's shooting and, and, and cutting people like, like he's supposed to, and, and, but better than you can ever imagine. No, I'm, I, look, Tim Miller, genius, 
visionary director, has been behind the scenes running Blur Studios, uh, has touched you in ways that you don't know, in, not, not to stick clearly, but, um, but in, 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 with all the video game bumpers and trailers sure. and promotions he's done. And that guy's, I, 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 I'm so concerned because I think Monday morning, the guy, see Ryan Reynolds is already a star. Uh, uh, Paul and Rhett are hot writers in Hollywood. They, they, they're, they're working writers. Tim Miller, first time director, wouldn't know it. Looks like a seasoned vet at the top of his game. The offers on that guy's table, look out. And, and it's, it's like, Fox, can we, can we make sure that he doesn't go anywhere? Can we make sure right. he stays, he down, stays right here? Because down. Tim Miller is going to, it's game changing. When you see the footage, you're like, oh my gosh, this is fantastic. So a question about Blur Studios. Now, is this the same Tim Miller who is like doing the, the, the goon Kickstarter? Correct. That's his yeah, company, that's right? Tim. So yes. hopefully this will help because oh, I'm yeah. a big fan of Eric Powell's. We're sure. friends. I They're love all, the goon. Yep. I really want to see that goon movie happen. Tim Miller's imprint is going to be uh, enormous, and and he knows how much I, I dig him and love him, and he's but he's ridiculously talented. There's and and very humble and soft spoken, but knows what he wants. I I have been hiding stuff on my iPad for so long. He showed me <laughs> storyboards and concept drawings, and I'm like, I wish the world could see this. Oh man! And then I'm like, oh, there it is. It's on screen. It's moving. It's actually better than the matte painting. Right, wow. you know, you know what else is crazy too? You can see Ryan, Ron, uh, Ryan Reynolds' face while he's masked. Yeah, I've yeah. never yes. seen That's any true. kind of a, a full mask on anyone that you can actually still see the person's face. Yes, it's so weird. Like you can totally see Ryan Reynolds himself, even though he's completely covered. I, I'm, I'm going to tell you the thing, that, uh, and it's the highest compliment I can give uh, from from coming from comic books. Being a comic book fan, I don't know about you guys. Always, always loved the Avengers. Always loved. Um, Loved the Avengers cast. Thought Iron Man was cool, but he was never my favorite. Right. Iron Man was never my favorite mm -hmm. comic book character. Then 2008, Robert Downey Jr. comes out, and, and you're like, I've never seen Tony Stark like this before. And let's be honest, he threw himself into that performance, yeah. and, and, and everybody was like, wait, Iron Man opened almost $100 million? You know, this movie that wasn't supposed to be, and, and, it, and, and look, that movie was lean, it was smart, well-directed, great dialogue, great performance. And I'm telling you, Ryan is to Deadpool as Downey Jr. is to Tony Stark and Iron Man. He and and Hugh Jackman and Wolverine. Mm. You you won't be able to imagine anybody ever again playing him, and he's going to own this role for for two decades. Nice. I mean, that, it is, and it's that kind of transform. I mean, when my mom is like, "I'm, what are you doing this weekend, mom? I'm going to see Iron Man. What? <laughs> oh, that Robert Downey Jr. And we've talked. Sure, women love Ryan. Guys love Ryan. Women love Ryan. And this is the 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 combination of all of that it's just going to explode i think people are really in for it yeah this is a superhero film that is crossing over is. into like areas that people are like i don't read comics yep. i never heard about it that's funny i can't wait to see oh, yeah. it and right. women are like I, this is making me laugh oh, yeah. everything about it is really crossing over on all these different levels that's why chris gore is going to make 100 million dollars <laughs> and you're going to owe me that 25 bucks i want it all in singles so i could count them slowly wow, you, you're going on the record you're just going on the record it's, already, it's on the record right, yeah right. let's move on we're going to talk more about deadpool and go into uh, rob liefeld's amazing career but let's first talk about some other news. How funny do we want Thor Ragnarok? So after the news of director Taiki uh, Watiti of the comedy series, sorry if I murdered your name, of the comedy series Flight of the Concords and the comedic mockumentary What We Do in the Shadows, once we, we found out that he was actually directing this film, I understood the script was reportedly so heavy and dark that they wanted someone with a lighter touch to direct the movie and add some moments of humor to the film. So here's a quote from Taika. Whether or not the the uh, whether or not the Hulk should be verbal or conscious, I think those conversations have more to do with what's going to be happening in future movies. So I think those are larger group decisions. He also stated that he wants to be able to add his brand of humor when it's needed. Um, how funny do we want the Hulk and Thor to be? Let's talk to you, Rob. What do you think? I'm going to tell you right now. Thor? I took my family to see Avengers opening weekend. Uh, my daughter at the time is uh, nine. Uh, so everyone's a little younger, but the... Laugh of the movie, the big moments are Thor and Hulk. And when he punches Thor out, right. and I mean, Hulk steals every scene when he grabs Loki and does him yeah, like a rag doll. Yeah. My daughter just burst out laughing and it was the moment that they all talked about. So their big moments, Hulk's, I think most you know, significant moments on screen are when he is making you laugh because he's so intimidating and I think the, the the idea of, of Helmsworth, Thor, and, and, and Hulk together for a whole movie in a sure. buddy cop picture 
is is fantastic. It's comic gold. I think I think they can make it work. I think I they do. Can make and it work. when they said it's a road movie like uh, Hope and, and Crosby, I was like, my God, it makes total yes. sense. They are on alien camels, right? It's like, are they going to sing? Yes. What do you think? Look, I think if you look at Thor, the way Helmsworth played him, especially in the first Thor movie when he's with Warriors Three and they're on Asgard. He's kind of funny. Mm -hmm. Like, he's this big, bombastic personality. He's the party guy. He's taken his three badass warrior friends to kick ass. Mm -hmm. And he's not some morose, dark. He's ha Thor is having a good time being Thor. Yeah. And he I likes think, to drink. He likes that scrambled yes. eggs. Oh, give me more of this. Absolutely. Gonna... And I think you put him together with the Hulk. I mean, that is comic gold, but I don't think I want to see the Hulk drunk. But they're not gonna. They're not as long as the humor is not at the expense of our characters. Yes. That the, the humor has to come from within there. Those characters. Why did why did Thor, why did the Hulk punch Thor? It was hilarious. It seemed to work right then. It yeah. didn't, you didn't go, well, that was stupid. No, right. it was awesome, and it just because there was that great beat where Hulk actually thought about it. Like I'm gonna. And just bam. And it's also they were getting, he was getting a little payback from that when they were up on the on the Avengers ship and Thor yes. hammered him yes. with the hammer. Like seeing <clears> that <throat> Thor fighting Hulk for me as a, oh. a fan of the Avengers of the Fantastic Four from a little a little kid. I remember Hulk fighting Thor those Kirby yep. issues and to see that happen again. In fact, I was like, we're going to talk about Heroes Reborn, but like you having Thor fighting the Hulk. Sure. Those are comic books that you know are collectors items because they're awesome. When you see these two characters go at it, so you definitely are going to see them go at it but I'm starting I'm starting to warm up to Taika taking over and adding that humor because he himself said that he used that as the ragdoll scene where Hulk ragdolls Loki is like that's a li those moments he wants to make sure he can bring those elements into this kind of overall what's going to be it's called Thor Ragnarok you know if you don't know what Ragnarok is kids it's the end of everything <laughs> and Kate Blanche is going to be playing Hela and she's trying to pull this sword we'll see how they all play it out as far as like you know the Stanley Jack Kirby mythology of Norse mythology. We're going to see how that all plays yep. out. I can't. I want to see Surtur. I want to see the Man Gog. I want to see all those crazy characters. I want to see Beta Ray Bill. But I want to see this done the right way. And it feels like that they're kind of merging in a little bit of Planet Hulk. I'm totally cool with this taking its time to get to that amazing ending. Me too. Well, what we do, what we do in Shadows. If anyone has not seen this movie, it's mm. basically about a group of vampires <laughs> living together in a flop house That's right. in New Zealand. But what was great about the film is again all of the humor came out of the situational nature of it. Yes. They never made fun of it outside of, it's still a genre movie, it works. What would happen if three vampires like were living in a city, hanging out together as roommates? Right. That situation was funny. And this scene, what's the director's name? Uh, Taika uh, Waititi. Okay, when he uh, uh, try, has the girl over in the first act, and right. he's like, he's getting ready, he's gonna he's putting take her papers blood. down. <laughs> he accidentally, the artery explodes, yeah. that's, the setup was great. The payoff was better. He's a very good director. He, he's got his com comedic timing, but going back to the first Thor. The first Thor, I remember reading about it. I'm like, it, it sounds like they're going to take a Starman approach. Right. And he's Jeff Bridges. And he's coming to Earth. And that's how they did it. And uh, that, that he was the alien in our world trying to acclimate to Earth and can't stand us. Uh, more, more not as checked out as Jeff Bridges right. and Starman was. Right. But still the same dynamic. I'm an alien in your world and you know, I drive a car and all this stuff. But the best moment is when he, write, he is a little drunk and he goes in and says, I need your finest steed <laughs> right. to, to the pet shop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, I'll have your finest steed. That's Helmsworth sells that stuff. Yeah, he's absolutely. great. And like you said, it's going to be dark. I mean, I can't believe, I, I, I think Kate Blanchett, isn't she yeah, a heavy? She's in playing it? Hella. She's yeah. I mean, oh my gosh. And on the new Vanity Fair, she's showing us, I am sexy as any 20 year old in Hollywood. And oh, she's one of the greatest actresses she on the planet. And so there's going to be those moments that are heavy and meaningful, but I do believe we are looking at a buddy cop movie. And, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to swing it back quickly because you got Deadpool behind you. The thing that people, the thing that I always loved about the script, and you're going to see it when you see the movie, Colossus is it, and D Deadpool have kind of a buddy cop dynamic. Nice. Um, whereas he is your uh, uh, Murtaugh and Deadpool is your Riggs. <laughs> and, and I mean, it's, it's, it's not quite rush hour, right. but there is that straight man. And, and, I, and I do think, like you said, the dynamic, how is Hulk, how is Thor gonna be saddled with Hulk? You know it's gonna be like, why am I taking care of this ogre? 
right. you know? Or is it going to be Ruffalo like, I'm always angry? Is it because they're talking about it's going to be that kind of, I don't know if it's going to be a Mr. Fix It type okay. of a Hulk, okay. but he's going right. to be somewhere where he can talk and he's going to have that angry edge to him, but it might be a funny edge. No, what do we know. think his voice, they're going to give him a voice, right? They, I've, yeah. I've been reading about this. They're going to give him a voice. Uh, I'm like, what, what kind of voice are they going to give him? I, I, is Ruffalo going to do the voice? I certainly hope it is Ruffalo. And it's not like, oh, I'm, I'm Batman, not modulated. I just no. want okay. it to be Ruffalo's voice. It'll be interesting. But like, just, you know, he just gargled an ashtray or something. It's <laughs> yeah. like, it's got to uh, yeah. be a little dark. It's got to be something, you know? I think it's going to be great. It's yeah. going to be great. Well, let's move on. Next subject, we got Legends of Tomorrow, the, uh, an unbelievable amount of guests. We've got Flash meeting Supergirl. It's a DC TV explosion. So Legends of Tomorrow has time jumping and features Constantine, Jonah Hex, Our Man, Red Tornado, a much older Green Arrow from a future multiverse who's missing an arm. Dark Knight Returns, what's up? While the Flash has ripped into the multiverse, and here comes a crisis from if Infinite Earth storyline to feature the first crossover between the Flash and Super. Supergirl. All this is happening right now while we're alive. It's weird. It it's totally it's insane. If you're like, if you're a little older like us, you experience this in comic books, and now we're seeing this come to life in the movies and on the small screen. Let's talk about this, Robert. Have you seen these uh, TV series? Yes, and let me tell you. Uh, you know, we've talked about Legends of Tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I, I was a DC fanboy since I was a little kid. I mean, one of my favorite episodes of the hour-long Super Friends is the giant computer, the geek computer, when mm -hmm. they went to, I, plastic. Great man. stuff. I, I can't believe what we're seeing. I mean, I'm watching, I'm seeing the beginnings of this crisis Sunday from the first episode of Legends right. of Tomorrow. You could see things sprinkled in. They're just, there's like nobody saying no. It's like Greg Berlanti and his team, unfettered comic book fanatics. You know, we talk about Kevin Feige sitting yes. atop his tower with people just waving just comic fanning books him. at him. And we yeah. call him fanners. Yeah. yeah. He's <laughs> just got these people just waving. With classic yeah. comics. Okay. He's just being yeah. fan. He pulls just one fan. from the sky and goes, ooh, let's do that. Yeah. yeah. You know, and, and we're getting things we no, never you're right. thought we'd Berlanti, see. Berlanti, Guggenheim, these guys have the run of the, of the place. And, and, and it's obvious. They're just saying, go with it. Have fun. Yeah. Because I grew up. Uh, the, the DC stuff that I migrated to the most was their secondary, uh, secondary in sales, but not in qu quality of characters. Sure. Um, whether it was Challengers of the Unknown, whether it was uh, 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 Firestorm, all these characters that they're now uh, Hawkman. I mean, I did a run on Hawkman I, right. I, because I was passionate, and the fact that they've put them all together and made this kind of Justice League of 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 of, of, of secondary of the, of the secondary right. characters, yeah. and it's better to me than than. Arrow and Flash uh, in two episodes. I, uh, I just watched both of those last they're night. They're great. They're really fun. And the yeah. action, the action is what's blowing me away. The Atom, that was an Ant-Man scene. In the <laughs> opening of the second, when he goes and runs across the room and they're tracking him and the blocking and the choreography really on good. the action, it, action is yeah, top I was notch. Uh, glad you it's brought that up because it was astonishing because you're dealing with not just one character, but you're dealing with like eight different characters fighting while other scenes are happening yeah. and they're moving around and you're seeing everybody do everything. It's right. really well no, amazing. Atari Force. <laughs> I want to see Atari oh, Force yeah. Legends of Tomorrow, please. I yeah, want to just see an Atari Force series. That'd be, that'd be great. But yeah, that'd I mean, great. it feels like, you know, that they're going to be plucking out like Our Man. They yes. got the Red Tornado. And now we've we've heard, I mean, it's pretty much official. I, I know there's not an official official thing, but they're saying the Flash, C, the CW is meeting the CBS. That's their, that's their crisis that's where great. you basically have those two characters who are the main, you know, the main impetus of the crisis on Infinite Earths to try to, to try to melt down the multiple Earths into one thing. And we've seen, as obviously you've experienced this in so many different incarnations from Crisis, didn't you actually own some of the Crisis artwork for a while? I, I did. I owned, I owned uh, uh, quite a few pages. Right, right. Well, I so was a huge Perez didn't you fan. Own, yeah. Didn't you own Titans Games? Uh, no, no, no. I owned Avengers JLA. All oh, that's, that's, that's right. That's what you owned. And, and, right. and that, George but, but Perez, I had sure. all of George's, um, the 22 unpublished pages. Right. And I'll be honest, the appeal of owning that was that it was special. Yeah. And it was this it, the stories told a comic book story, but also there was a story about this forbidden crossover that didn't happen. Right. And then when they greenlit and said, we're going to do four 50-page issues and there's going to be 200 pages of this, I, I have to be honest, I, I'm glad for you guys. But I was like, it's not special. I, I told my, my wife, I go, it's like if George Lucas had 20 minutes of the original Star Wars that he had edited out and never shown, and it was an important sequence. And then they're like, yeah, we're showing it. And then you go, wait. But my negatives aren't worth anything anymore. I was, I was, I was, I was heartbroken. And, and I got to be honest, I'm glad George got to do it. I think it was overstuffed. The pages I had were fantastic. 
fantastic. No, they're it great. Was, and I think yeah, I have, yeah. a, I have the, whatever that recollection of that were printed from yeah. those pages that you would own. I have yeah, they, I, I made, I, the thing with George, when I bought them, and this is what they didn't understand, DC and Marvel got a little testy with me back in the early 2000s. They said, we understand you've let them go, but don't you have copies? I said, yeah, I do have copies, but here's the deal. When George sold them to me, every page, all 22 pages was matted. They were matted in, in double matte frames and shrink wrapped. Mm. There's plastic on each one of them. So when I went and took them and scanned them, they had to scan f uh, the, the mat, lifted them off the right. scanner, and then you gotta go through plastic. So wow. I'm like, hey guys, this is as good as I got, okay? You wanna, huh? I'm sorry that I didn't get the address of the guy who bought the pages. <laughs> like, you know, right. but, um, right. but like, this is as good as I have. Right. But that, and you, you gotta understand, when I was a kid, that was, whoa. I mean, comics interview, had a cover with the Avengers and the and, I remember and, and that. JLA, oh, yeah. and then they printed a few of those pages. So when George made them for sale, I, I mean, I owned them for I think about twelve years. But wow. when they're gonna they're gonna do it, and it was modern. It takes oh, a little bit of the magic it away. Did. But you know what? Let's talk about the amalgam universe for a yeah. second, because oh. that's another weird type of crossover. <laughs> yes, yes. Like that's coming. About, you know, that's gonna be a legend of tomorrow at some we'll, point. We'll see this. We'll see this maybe in about ten years when like the big companies are like, let's mix it up a little. You know, yeah, we'll sure, see sure, that. Sure. I'm sure we'll see something like that, whether it's on TV you're in the movies we're talking about where the big two dc and marvel kind of like traded their characters and threw them together and 1996. Batman, Wolverine, 1996 1996 thank you yeah yeah i think it was dark claw there was all these different uh -huh. kind of crazy syntheses of like different characters x patrol doom patrol and that's x right that's uh, right x no, there's good was stuff great. there's was there so was some fun. really inspired stuff yeah uh, definitely what was the doctor fate doctor fate and doctor strange were Something. Oh boy! But I don't even. Remember. It, it, it was, was some great. really it was great. crazy really madness. Now, they they did only did that because Kickers Incorporated in the new new universe Boo! wasn't good. Yeah, that yeah. was a weird one. <laughs> I remember when the new so universe came out. I was like, why does this all suck? The only I, one I did like was Star the Star Brand. Brand. Star I worked Brand's at a comic good. store. I worked at a comic store in 1986 to 1987, and it was when Dark Knight and Watchmen hit, right. and then the new universe hit. And it's just so funny because I remember working in retail, and the, the main reason, look, anyone can tell you, especially back then, uh, Monday and Tuesday. And, and Thursday are quiet at a comic store. So I got to sit there at the register and draw and, nice. and make sample pages. And then, but Wednesday, you know, you gotta get ready for that influx of fans. And yeah. uh, and just, I just remember the new universe and people just going, I'm not buying this. I'm not trying this out. And you just go, yeah, it was kind of stillborn. It, it, it landed. It was not know. good. It did not work. It so were you, were, you, were you at the, were you working at a comic book store when Camelot 3012 hadn't come out for like a year? Well. Now that was I earlier. Think it, 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 it had just earlier. shipped. That was in 83, 84. Yeah. But no, I was in the... Con Look, the, the year that I worked there, so saw Watchmen Dark 12. Knight. Dark Knight 1 and yeah. 2 came out, and then about two-month delay for 3, and then a four-month oh, delay. I remember and, that. And I'm going to tell you, you... you um, the phone is Dark Knight in, is Dark Knight in, is Dark Knight in, is Dark Knight in, and Watchmen then had a long delay. Yeah, there was it, tw like between issues eight, and I remember there was like a three or four month wait between eight and nine or somewhere. I was like yeah, irritated. No, no, was. I'm gonna right. go in there and kill people. Who where you know? Or yeah. Miracle Man also had this like yes. a 14 month delay. Because like, they were a, dense. You know, it yeah. was hard enough when you're buying 10 or 20, 20 books right. a week to keep everything in, in your head. Right. But then Watchmen demanded you go back and reread the entire oh, yeah. series it, it's to funny, get the new though, issue. Uh, I, I was talking about this online the other day. I think I, there's a there's a face group group. A Facebook group I, I go nerd on all the time and and we were talking when Dark Dark Knight's delay was was very long but when the last issue landed you, people freaked out it, they did not um, immediately forgot about the four or five month wait and were just celebrating it when Watchmen 12 came in people were not happy they didn't that it, the giant squid on the double right, page right. people were like and, and remember and, and one of my buddies used to say Alan Moore's great but he can never finish a story. He can't finish. This is not my opinion. This is what I was told. Mm -hmm. I, I thought Watchmen was fine, but as a retail, um, uh, as a retailer, it, it was two late products. One came in and stuck the landing, and one was controversial. Yeah. And, and I, but but you know, I still love the squid ending because it, it, he tied it in with the weird artist community. And I gotta give you mad props, dude, for supporting Alan Moore. Yeah. When no one else did. When no one else. When would. you had awesome uh, comics, you had you had his back, and I love you for that, dude. No, dude, he was I bought cool. Every issue that came out. Of, of awesome I, I comics. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Of, I liked a lot of them. Yeah. Some I didn't, but I bought every single one because I appreciate it. Giant Alan Moore fan, and like you supported that dude job. when everyone else was like, nah, nah, nah. He's too difficult and it, weird. You were like, no, and, this man is a genius. You know, he's and, talked about that a lot on the show. How did that come to pass? Yeah, let's talk about uh, that. Alan Moore was doing, uh, he actually did a Spawn miniseries. And Eric Stevenson, who now is the publisher of Image Comics, was my editor in chief. He ran my studio uh, for six years. And he got into a conversation with Alan, and Alan said, you have this, uh, this Superman-style character, Supreme. You got any plans for him? 
And Eric's like, do you, do you want to do them? And he's like, yes. And it was like, Rob, is that done? I mean, come on, we're dumb. <laughs> okay, the greatest writer in the history of comics right. is gonna wants to write Supreme. And he wrote the two a two part oh. of the, the that last two issues of Superman where they gave the idea of yes, like the man who stole tomorrow. Yes, or thank the, you. The, no, is that what was it called? The, the something about the man from tomorrow. Yeah. But whatever happened. Whatever, whatever happened to the man from tomorrow. Yeah, That's you. it. But no, look, look, the first issue of Supreme that he did where he introduced the the the, the what's it called? Not the Supremium, but it was like that every past supreme era goes and gets collected mm -hmm. in this one um and they all like the 70 supreme and the 80 supreme and they all hang out like your era is done and it was such it was so meta like so when john Byrne was done with Super superman it went here and when and it went here and they all coexist but they can't get out anymore they have to stay here because we're always going on to the next thing and you're like alan you're blowing my mind <laughs> and then i mean he he did his supreme run and you know what it won uh, best comic two years in a row. Mm -hmm. He got all those awards. He deserved all of them. Um, but he was the best thing. Uh, and 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 you gotta be honest. Alan has slowly devolved into a more bitter yes. version. Yes. And he was very funny at this time. And I have a two and a half hour uh, cassette tape. And I told him I was taping him because <laughs> he was pitching me a story. All right. And he had just seen uh, Pulp Fiction. And his fascination with Tarantino. This entire. Um, conversation and he was clearly the thing he was pitching me was very heavily influenced by Pulp Fiction but but but, but to hear him say oh, well, well, oh, well, the, the, the bloods and the crips and the future bloods and the future crips and I'm like the future bloods and the future oh, crips man. and then he's like and, and they're going to run through uh, downtown Compton which has become an amusement park of death. And you wow. go, an amusement park of death? Downtown Compton? <laughs> I want to like, see that. No, no, dude, yeah. he was off. I mean, and, and occasionally he would stop himself and he would giggle. And I'm like, when I die, I will upload Please, these Please, dude. The Alan Moore, Can Rob you do, be, do it before you die, yeah. dude. Come on. <laughs> you want to enjoy the people. Oh, I don't need to. Dude, dude, here's the deal. Out. Here's the deal. Reason you don't want to piss Alan Moore off is because at one point, true story, he disappeared for a while, and Eric Stevenson said, "Where have you been? We haven't been here. Where is you for a th th uh, few weeks? What would you say? Where have you been? Uh, you've been on vacation. You've yeah, I went to Hawaii. Where, okay, we've all we've all yeah, we come up with some answer that's not this answer. Right? <clears throat> Where were you? I was in a trance, and I was in the dreamscape, talking to Gandhi and Jesus, and I was like, oh shit, <laughs> Alan Moore's been talking to Jesus and Gandhi." And he, and he said it like, and we all, we said, is he pulling our leg? Right? Is he pulling our leg, or is he straight up just like, no, I, I was, I was uh, talking to Jesus and Gandhi, and and he talked very much like he's swallowing all the time. <laughs> and, uh, and 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 but now when I read him, and here's the deal, I do believe on some level he's a wizard, and I don't need to be turned into a frog. Right. So <laughs> that's why when I'm dead, <laughs> tapes go up. Because I even think, like, from the from the grave, Alan will come back as, like, a specter. Sure. Um, I'm reading all his Cthulhu stuff, yeah, his yeah, weird dude. Lovecraft stuff. Like, see, you're like, all right, you know, I want... And all of his League of Extraordinary Gentlemen yes. is always great. He just did that oh, Century, which those, all three of those were great. His Nemo stories, he's still He's on got a it. new novel yes. coming out, like some epic novel that's, like, 3,000 right. pages the, the long man, Let's just something. say the man is incredibly prolific, but he's had so many, like, little shining moments throughout his whole career, starting with Swamp Thing, yeah. even before that with you know judge dread and all the 2000 you know obviously miracle man marvel man yeah. but i mean his time on your books was truly spectacular and i, lo yeah. I loved even like the one or two issues of young blood oh, i know you had a they bunch were fantastic of, they yeah were fantastic and just it was fun to see like you know him coming up with stuff from your creations and yes. putting his weird little spin on it so i gotta thank hey, you thank again you. That, that, so much that for was that. um he, he he did a great job he, he look he gave us a different look uh, you, everyone out there, I want you to check out Supreme, written by Alan Moore, created by Rob Liefeld. Yes. Check out those books. They're available in trades or in Comixology. And also give your, do yourself a favor and look up some of Rob's awesome books. He's, he's gone through so many things. We're going to do that once we hit the spotlight with him, but we're going to go through his career. But uh, yeah, Legends of Tomorrow, Supergirl, Flash. If you're not checking these out, it really is. They've got this comic book universe down. I the think only thing I, really I, I got to say... As a huge Crisis on Infinite Earths fan, I know Supergirl's only in its first season, but I'm a little worried. If they go Crisis on her... No, that's not going to happen. What's going to happen to Supergirl? Talk, we are, we're also mentioning Alan Moore. They're adapting for the... For the I think it's called the man, For the Man Who Has Everything. Yeah. It's that annual Superman 18. Fantastic. That's already been done through the Justice League cartoon. Yeah. Now they're taking a spin on it, and they've got the, 
the evil, the mercy flower, yeah. whatever it's called. Right. And it's like right out of the right out of the Dave Gibbons drawings. The, the girl who has everything is what they're calling. It. Yes, oh, for the girl yeah, who has everything. Go. So That's that comes on next Monday. Yeah. So check out Supergirl next great. Monday. Let's move on to a, a topic I like to call minor mutations, where we're going to just talk like quick news of the week, and all of us are going to like weigh in on what uh, what what hits our fancy. First of all, we got Wolverine three. It starts shooting in April with Jackman and Stewart. They're in it. We got number two. We got Luke Cage fighting the NYPD on the latest onset picks from the Luke Cage series that looks like it's going to drop in November. Number three, we've got Batman v Superman. It's the fifth spot. Mercy is what they're calling it. It's badass. Uh, number four, we got Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two. It's got its first table read. The script's done. James Gunn's excited. He's talking about he's got Star Lord's dad, and the main villains are totally cast. Number five, we've got Paul Rudd. He talks about his expanding Ant Man role. Hint, spoiler, hint. And number six, finally, we've got the new Justice League cartoon. Cartoon has been announced for the Cartoon Network. So with some kind of a little redesigns on all the characters, but it looks like a lot of fun. What hits you guys, Rob? Out all those news wow. bits, what do you think? Uh, okay. I grew up in 70s Marvel, uh, and, and my mom was always very concerned about the comic books I was bringing home. Uh, Shang Chi, Master of Kung Fu, and Luke Cage, Power Man. Damn. And let me tell you something. I loved me some Power Man, and uh, I, I am so excited for the Luke Cage show. I Damn. mean, I, so, so, so that, those Netflix shows, and getting back to action and choreography, Daredevil was like, this is like a feature film it's every unbelievable. hour. unbelievable. They did a great job. Yes. So I'm um, uh, that, and then Batman and Superman, very excited for that. Very excited, because I, I believe they are not showing us a ton of stuff. I they, agree with they, you. They are keeping, they're holding stuff close to the vest that I think we're all going to go. If you look what? back, if you look back at every trailer and every little, little, little snippet they've released from the Batman v Superman movie, you can like, oh, it's these six scenes. And that's not that's two it. and a half that's hours. That's it. That's six scenes. So you better believe there's going to be some crazy excitement. I'm going to freak out when the rest of it's revealed. Yes. Well, well, I, you? Yeah, no, I feel the same way. I mean, we're big Batman, super, Batman v Superman. V I like Superman. it. It's like Roe sure. v. Wade. I know. It's, it's a not big versus. Court it's like battle. It's a, yes, it's a court battle. I have to tell you, I, I watched Guardians of the Galaxy the other night. Mm -hmm. I'm a huge yeah. fan. I've always loved James. We worked <laughs> together on a movie called The Specials a long time ago. Nice. But I love the way that movie looks. Oh, you know, fantastic. it has a the the, the color scheme, yeah. all the design work, Nova Prime. I mean, Glenn Close is Nova Prime. There's, there's celestials in the movie. Can you believe the that? The giant shit? celestial head they live on, and they're mining it's a amazing. celestial head. Yes. I mean, Benicio, it's such a crazy film. When you watch it again, it's really it just is fun. Now, I love the fact that he's basically kind of. Kevin Feige gave him his little kind of carte yeah. blanche. Right. Here you go, do your thing. You want to put Howard the Duck in the movie? Hey, man, go right ahead. That's right. I mean, the only thing wrong with Guardians of the Galaxy, the only thing wrong is that Hot Toys has not made a Drax figure yet. Nah. But other than that, <laughs> right. I am, right. I'm ready to go. I can't wait to see anything James does with that. I'm, and I, 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 who is Star-Lord's dad? Are yeah. we going to see Adam yeah. Warlock? I don't know. If they reboot the Fantastic Four, they can throw Luke Cage in there. Remember, he was, he yes. was in the Fantastic Dude, Four wait, for a couple of years. I love that. How great was the actor they cast as Luke Cage? Oh, Coulter, Jessica Jones. Coulter, yeah. great. I used to watch him on The Good Wife all the time. He was a main ca character, and now Luke Cage. He is Luke Cage. He's yeah. fantastic. He's I got a chance, so good. I got a chance to actually walk on the sets a okay. couple months ago of Luke Cage while they were shooting. It was like live sets where like you can't touch anything because they're returning. So I got to say without any spoilers, it's going to be amazing. I really think like just the way that the Netflix Marvel universe has established itself, they're smart. They're building these sets, like standing sets that all interconnect. So there's like, it's really cool. And I can't wait to see Jessica Jones after Luke Cage. I cannot wait to see Daredevil season two. Yeah. Come on, the Punisher and Elektra. I mean, what they're doing with that little bracket, of that little pocket universe. Yeah, it's crazy. It's so awesome. I mean, it's and like a 10 block radius and you don't need to go <laughs> anywhere right else. It's just like, we're going to hang and, out. And I'm going to tell you right now, last year, uh, San Diego Comic-Con, uh, one of the after parties, uh, Joseph Loeb III, also known as Jeff Loeb. Sure. Good buddy of mine. We always catch up because he's Mr. TV, Daredevil, Jessica Jones, and I am a huge Iron Fist guy. Totally. And Dude, he, he sat me down and he told me the first two episodes of Iron Fist. And I'm like, what? Can, can we just go straight to that? Can we just go to that oh. now? Because, And I'm telling you, man, he, I mean, he literally told me scene for scene. And I really think by that time, the buildup blow people away. The, the, they wait. are, like you said, the Defenders, right? Is yeah. that what they're called? Right. Yep. The Defenders is a fantastic enterprise for Marvel. I mean, it's, they delivered. Why? 
The fact that they've, I mean, I was surprised at how adult and dark Jessica Jones oh, yeah. was. Yes. I mean, you're watching, that was essentially an R-rated TV show that was really created, the showrunner was a woman, and that film was dealing- Melissa Rosenberg, she well, did a great she job. She did a phenomenal job, but that show really delved into what a rape survivor is and how much abuse women suffer on a daily basis yeah. in urban environments in America and indeed around the world. I thought it was- I hate to say it, but one ballsy move. To yeah, you know show. what? It was an incredibly smart series, and they touched on a lot of subjects, but still kept it moving forward. It was like you have Daredevil on this way, and you have Jessica Jones yeah. over here. I think you're going to have Luke Cage over here. You're going to have Iron Fist here, and they're all going to yeah. the defenders. It feels like real natural, and it, you, that's the good thing about the way they're programming that specifically that specific series. Because the way Netflix does is they're like, yo, here's 12 episodes, yeah. son. You're like, yeah. I don't have time in the day to watch all these shows. Are you destroying me? You know, I cannot catch sure. up. But like, it took me so long to finally watch all of Daredevil. And I was like, I'm going to have to watch all of Jessica Jones in a weekend. So uh, I did. See, you know, it's funny. We, 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 uh, uh, we were uh, moving from our old house to our new house in the escrows were a week apart. Mm. And so we went into our family. It was the best time we had last year. We went into one of these big residence inns and it was the week Daredevil came out. Nice. And every night I was like, kids, rally around. Yeah. We're watching Daredevil. That's and awesome. that's how we, we go. That week that we were all on top of each other in the residence inn, waiting to move in. So it was like from Saturday to Saturday and that's when Daredevil came out. And so that will always be like our special. And, and I'm with you, dude. It's the 10 block it's the 10 block yeah. radius, the Hell's Kitchen Chronicles. Right, yeah. that's it's, what it is. It's totally. Totally. Hell's Kitchen. And, totally. and like you said, man, Jessica Jones and Loeb told me, he said, Rob, it's your wife's going to love it. It's, uh, what's that Michael Douglas Glenn Close movie? Um, he goes, it's Fatal Attraction. Fatal Attraction. Every episode. It's Marvel's version. And, and then when I saw the first issue, I'm like, he sold that to me perfectly. I get it. it it's like you said, R-rated, yeah. heavy drama, great action, intrigue. And it uh, shows that you don't have to destroy the world at yeah. the end of every movie or the end of every show to make it oh, interesting. Yeah, he I mean, made it very personal, a very, very personal, personal series. I mean, I find Daredevil very personal, too. Yes. So, I mean, I, that's why I like, I want to, I want, I cannot wait to see how they, how they pull off bringing the Punisher into this world. And, so. and it's funny that you mentioned, okay, how much you love Guardians of the Galaxy. Sure. Which which is galactic, and then how much we love Daredevil and all this stuff, which is very grounded. Mm -hmm. And again, when I was a kid, um, I, I didn't. I bought everything, and Daredevil was not my favorite. And then I remember when Frank Miller came on, right. and first with Roger McKenzie for a few episodes. But when he and the, the tone of the book was changing, yep. and then. I mean, it was so grounded, and like you said, no, nobody's blowing up the world in Daredevil. No, but it was intrigue and consequences mm -hmm. and conflict and uh, great soap opera. That's what all this stuff is. It's yeah, great it soap is. Opera. I agree. It opera. totally is. You remember the, when Frank Miller came back to Daredevil, Daredevil and did the Born Again storyline with David Mazzucchelli? Oh, yeah. And then yeah. the first, the end of that first episode. Matt Murdock has a really bad day. Yeah. Bad and then he comes back day. to his, his he watch, well, he doesn't watch, but his, his entire tenement building collapses Trump. and he stands and he finds the Daredevil, you know, and his last line is, he knew it was the king. He pit. shouldn't you have just signed shouldn't it. Have, shouldn't have signed it. It's, that was like the, I, to this day, I'm getting chills right yeah. now just thinking about that. No, I remember yeah. when I was reading that book. 1986. Oh, yes. man, that Same was just. Dark Knight and Watchmen. Yeah, it was it truly that, yeah. I mean, that Daredevil run, Born Again, is yeah. truly Every single issue is That's incredible. Nuke, it is, nuke it is. the first was yes, it nuke, oh, first, the first nuke. nuke was in there. Yep. Oh, I mean, God. I love that. I, even afterwards, like with Typhoid just Mary, the way he sh just all the all way too. Frank Miller and with the beautiful art of Mazzucchelli showed Captain America and Iron Man yeah. with just holding that one. Yeah. Like he, he you know, he, he has had a voice array. Yeah. Just uh, all the, the dialogue is he had a voice that could command a god. And did yes, and right. Show, and you're like, it's a shadowy oh, shot of Thor, like rocking that lightning. Is that the best? Oh, is that the best line for Captain America ever? He had a voice that could command a god, and did. Yes, <laughs> yeah. Those, I mean, those were Miller at uh, his best. It, it, at the his, high point. That's, that's his peak. Yeah. Uh, but I gotta say that watching many these, peaks, are, watching these shows, kind of give me the feel of what it was like going to the comic book store every Wednesday mm -hmm. when you're at the height of when Marvel and DC had renovated. You know, in like you said, when you were there, eighty yeah. six, yeah. yeah. you had Thor eight, on. Uh, you had Simonson on Thor. Right. You had Burn on Fantastic Four. You had a whole amazing run. You had Shaken popping off those weird shadows. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, no, it was stuff. crazy. And, th and that was the time when it was also like music, too. Music was so diverse. I mean, you could it listen was. to Guns N' Roses, or you could listen to Prince, or you could listen right. to like Berlin if you yep. wanted your techno right. fix. And you had direct Terry market, Nunn. direct sales. You had Nexus. You had First Comics. American oh, yeah. Flag Horse, was popping off. Yeah. And it was, it was, there was all of that. We're kind of getting that now. 
You can go to the theater. Yes. You can see Batman versus Superman, which is dark. Right. You get to go see Deadpool, which is a hell's a pop and crazy movie. I can't yes. wait to see yes. it you tomorrow get, night. You get Kingsman. You get like these cool Kings, like yes. one offs where you're like a lot of things that are coming out now. Ghost you don't World, even, know. even. I mean, yeah, you, all the different yep. things. Walking Dead. Got to throw Walking yeah, Dead. Yeah, Walking Dead for sure. I mean, it just keeps going and keeps topping itself. It's hard to keep up. Like right now, there's literally eleven series Isn't that are crazy? on every Isn't week. That crazy. That are all comic book and, and, and going back to Legends of Tomorrow, which you said about the color in Guardians of the Galaxy, mm. Legends of Tomorrow is very colorful. Right. Yes. I, I I love how the the scheme and the characters. I think it's a perfect mix of all these, uh, you know, eclectic. They are B-list characters, yes. but they come together to make... As I, my, my kids were like, Dad, what, what are we about to watch? What's Legend of Tomorrow? I go, it's the B-list Avengers. Just roll with it. Totally. Just roll with <laughs> it. And I like that I, Rip, Rip Hunter tells them that. Dude. He's like, you're actually inconsequential. Yeah, and that's why you're on the ship, son. <laughs> right. Everyone's like, what? We're out of here. Great. That was like, great. Their egos were that bruised. It was harsh. And it's funny because they sold it on that trailer was, you're not heroes. Right. You're legends. legends. And, right. then, and then he goes, oh, okay, you're inconsequential. I lied. So good, but it's a perfect setup, and now we're gonna <laughs> be was, going to jo- we're gonna check out Jonah Hex. I mean, it's yeah. like no, that's so the cool. one arm green green arrow that was swing. Oh, yeah, oh God. Come come on. On. you're like you're you're going into Dark Knight. I know, I'm saying it. they're just they are, basically saying they're balls, it. It's like you said, Guggenheim, uh, Berlanti. It's just, I mean, look, they got the minus touch. They got the minus see, touch. Uh, it's incredible. Right. I never thought we'd live in this day and, and age. We're just here to enjoy it now. I think. Yep. And let's check. Let's talk about something we didn't enjoy that much. Flashback time. We're gonna rock on Wolverine. Wolverine Origins. So Wolverine Origins, the pain when you have such an incredible character, an amazing backstory, and then the, cin- the cinematic version takes a steamy corner dump on all of the above. <laughs> no, I'm not talking about Wolverine. I'm specifically talking about the character Deadpool, which was so screwed up in this movie, the insane potential of having the hilarious Ryan, Ryan Reynolds as Deadpool that it almost killed not only the Wolverine sequel, it literally buried the chance of a Deadpool movie for years after it came out. We also got a pretty cool saber tooth thanks to Lee Schreiber, a goofy version of the blob, an extra young Emma Frost, a computer graphics Tron-like dead-eyed creepy VR version of a walking Patrick Stewart Professor X that still bugs me when I see that scene. It's like, come with me, Logan. And then uh, and then an okay gambit. Let's just talk about Wolverine Origins, a movie that we all wanted it to be amazing because yeah. Hugh Jackman is Wolverine. He's still that, Wolverine. Uh, Rob, what do you think about Wolverine Origins and okay. your creation, no, no, listen, Deadpool? Listen, here's the deal. Uh, First of all, I think there's some highlights in that movie, but they're mostly all in the first 45 minutes. The opening totally. sequence where he and Leave as super as Sabretooth are going through time yes. battling is fantastic. And when uh, the guy who recruits them shows up, gets them out, and, and I'm gonna tell you, here, here's the deal. If you look back, people love Ryan as Wade in the first 20 minutes. Totally. He's perfect. He cuts the bullet. He's got the red, he's got the mouth. He's making fun of everybody. He, and you're like, this is Ryan Reynolds. And here's the deal. If Ryan didn't sell us and get us to love him so much in that first 20 minutes, we wouldn't have been so upset with what happened at the end. Right. You know, I'm like, you did that. It, it, it was because he had so delivered in the, in the beginning. Now here's the deal back. That is so many regimes ago. I gotta be honest. That is so many regimes ago at Fox. And at the time, one of the producers uh, had told me, I, they, 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 I was talking about another project and I said, so I'm really excited about Deadpool. I'm really, and he's like, Wolverine Origins isn't about Deadpool. I mean, the, the, the big character is Gambit. And I'm like, oh, so you don't, you don't pay attention to online and you're not like, you're not like looped in because people are really amped about, and, and, and so then I, there was a guy named Alex Winter who was an executive there, not Alex Winter, Alex, I forget his name. He, he was the executive at Fox. And I literally was on the Fox lot. I went down to his office. He was out to lunch and I left him a drawing of Deadpool in the mask. And I said, tell me, that you are gonna put the mask on him in this movie. This would be a colossal mistake. And I left it for him. And then I called enough to message for him. And then he called enough to message for me. And he said, Rob, just 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 give it time. We tried something different. And I'm like, oh, oh. And so then when I went and, and saw it, it was painful. That uh, to this day, when he grows the uh, the, the weird, sword yeah. out of his hand, yeah. you go, when that retracts, how are you moving your elbow? Like, well, what? Right. Wait where a does it go? Yeah, where's it? It's too long. But they look. <clears throat> I think that is the turning point, and then everything got better. Uh, because I, I got a call. Actually, it, it, uh, the Donners called me summer of 2009. So the movie came out in May and August, and they said, Rob, we know we didn't get Deadpool right. Help us. We're, 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 we're throwing out storylines. And really that day, I acted as a guide. Like, no, 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 don't do that. Don't, don't do it. Go this way. Don't do that. Go, go this way. Let's stay in this, in this space right here. Because they were throwing out a lot of 
crazy stuff. And I'm and and uh, I'm like, no, 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 you, you can't do the Serpent Society. You you don't know what those you don't know what those characters like like that's not in the. So we got to move those on. And and so look, that's so cool that they called you and asked you because I mean a lot of people. You, that's why a lot of people don't read the comics. They're just like, what about these characters? And blindly move <clears throat> forward. So it's good that they're actually to, to, referencing. To their credit, they hurt. The outcry was severe. Yeah. And. Uh, and and trust me, you gotta understand. I was doing a lot of conventions that year, and so I knew that when people would come up to me, it was, "Hey, life, how do you think about it? the most asked question of, of sure. my career at that point?" Right. Was how'd you feel? And and I just because I think the people at Fox have good intentions, and now obviously I know that again. That's two regimes ago, and I just said it's it's a start. Let's just call it a start. And I knew behind the scenes they were already trying to make a better version. So here's the deal. Ryan doesn't push for a solo Deadpool movie. It probably does not. It, when Wolverine Origins opened, you got to remember it opened like ninety some million dollars. It was a big opening. Sure, it was a big opening. Um, it uh, it generated some excitement in the brief initial opening, and based on Ryan's uh, career and 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 the reception to him, and he had a bunch of other movies that year that were doing very well. They they piggyback Deadpool on, on on the back end. I mean that's how the business works. And so I always tell people, Ryan used his considerable heat, couldn't do anything, to say, let's make Deadpool happen. And they made it happen for him. And so that they deserve credit for that. And and at least recognizing that that, that was something they could do to make it right. Go ahead. Well, I was going to say, I, I really agree with you about Wolverine Origins. I think the first 45 minutes of the movie are actually pretty damn good. Yeah. Yep. And uh, again, like with so many other genre films, especially superhero films before the, this new golden age, it was the tone of the films that it completely goes off the rails. It Even is. the beginning, when when his team with Deadpool is 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 attacking that facility, right. that stuff worked. That worked well. Was, I mean, it's good. I thought it was great. It was like the Dirty Dozen going in. Yeah. And, but then it spun off the rails and went into weird fantasy. Everybody thought we have to make it a comic book movie. But yeah. what people never understood is the comic book readership takes their superheroes very seriously. Right. I mean, w there's there's a suspension of disbelief that the best comic writers and artists maintain throughout a series. That's why you like... Like, I remember reading Mike Grell's uh, uh, Green Arrow, mm -hmm. which I love because I loved his John Sable's Longbow, Sable. Hunters. Longbow yeah, Hunters. Longbow the Longbow right. Hunters was it took place in Seattle, which is my hometown, yeah. and I loved his his artwork at the time, yes. and and I thought, okay, this is a serious. Where you could make Green Arrow kind of goofy. I mean, I'd seen him traveling around with Green Lantern, you know, back in the yeah. Denny O'Neill, Neil Neil Adams days. But but this is what comic readers want to see. They want seriousness, and so many times filmmakers would not do that. They did Martin Campbell, who brought such a great sheen back to Goldeneye and Casino Royale. Right. He did great job with Bond. Just laid an egg. And then with Green Lantern, it was Green like. Lantern. Well, yeah, what the heck happened? I don't think he understood it. And no well, that was the thing he didn't. I mean, was also, the, there was way too many cooks. They were like, oh, uh, then you have this. You have the yeah. weird brown cloud creature. Like, who's the villain? Like, no, why does that it. guy's giant that's head it. get rid of him? Yeah. I can't remember it that guy's crazy. name. It was crazy. It was crazy. Yeah. Uh, and, and it is crazy that he, like you said, uh, my, my son got into Bond recently. And so he saw Goldeneye, saw Casino Royale, told him the same director. Yeah. And then I was like, and that's the guy that directed Green Lantern. He's like, what? I know, right? But, right. But that's where that where you can see, like, I think he had a firm grasp on what he was doing yeah. with not only Goldeneye but with the Bond franchise, and sure. he, so he understood it. I think with Green Arrow, it was like, so he's got a CG suit. It's like out of the realm, and then way too many people, and it's like you're just this giant production that just once it starts, the gun goes off. You're running towards a finish line. You don't. You're running off a cliff. You don't know what's happening. So I feel like that was Green Lantern. Wolverine Origins. To me, I agree with both of you. I think the first 30, 40 minutes. Really good storytelling yep. sets everything up. Sets up the new Sabretooth, Leave yes, Schreiber. He sets was great. Up, yeah, he, he was, was great. He, he was. was fantastic. He's an amazing actor. He brought something really cool to Sabretooth, and then it just became a series of scenes. Yes, it became like, and that's what the biggest. That became fault, more outlandish and unbelievable. But I mean, just nothing was really connected. It's like, oh, Wolverine's off, and the, you know he's a fucking lumberjack with this woman, and then now there's these other guys. The Blob shows up. They're just like trying to connect yeah. the first forty minutes to this last series of weird scenes. I have to say, I feel that same way that happened but not to the same degree with the next Wolverine where it's like all of a sudden the first hour is really great and then they have the girl with the green cosplay outfit playing Viper and they have the silver samurai but it all becomes way too comic booky when you set this amazing realistic tone the last 30 minutes didn't fit and so Wolverine like didn't fight ninjas 
He gets yeah, taken out they, by ninjas. Well, You're waiting cut, for them to be They cut that out. That's in like the strange Blu-ray edition. You're like, why don't you put that in the movie, yo? That's I, what... I, I'm telling you, I had a dream the other night. Uh, I woke up and they, they reshot the last 20 minutes of Origins uh, with Ryan in the Deadpool costume. Really? And uh, <laughs> this is my dream. This I, I need to be clear. This is a dream. I want to see this, this dream. This well, they did release the rogue cut of X-Men. They might do Dude, it. But I'm like, so go back, make all those 20 minutes. Suddenly Wolverine Origins is like... Makes another three hundred million dollars because it's like, and 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 he would break the fourth wall and go, "What do you think of me now?" Yeah, like yeah, he's got the red <laughs> suit. And that's a good idea. Reach, I mean, oh my gosh! But you know, in that that that's a dream, um, because I, I I I'm telling you, the opening with his origin, and I I love that Revolutionary War, sure, Civil War, it's a lot of fun. That was good stuff, but it, it did go off the rails. I think Gavin Hood, who's the director, also you know was dealing with a lot of producers who were changing stuff. Yes. I heard this, <clears throat> a lot of weird you know, to make that red, paint this, do this, a lot of kind of pushing their weight around kind of producers. I know they're not part of the the Fox regime anymore. but No, right now, the guys at Fox, and let's, I, I need to give uh, a huge shout out to a uh, the guy who has really shepherded uh, Deadpool is Simon Kinberg. I haven't mm. said his name enough, and he is the coolest dude. And look, he, um, I loved First Class. First so, Class is maybe loved one of my favorite X-Men movies. It just has a great attitude with it. And, uh, and, and I remember my buddies in the business were like, that movie's gonna bomb, that movie's gonna bomb. I said, why? He goes, it's period. You don't do superhero period. And then I'm like, really? Because the superhero period, the, uh, the it, 60s X-Men, is a blast. Yeah. And Matthew Vaughn is a ridiculously talented filmmaker. Definitely. And he really, uh, but, but from Simon's involvement at that point on First Class to then uh, Days of Future Past, which is the best, uh, the, the, the most successful. And I, I mean, I have watched that movie infinite amount of times. It's infinitely watchable. And, I, and Simon was uh, instrumental in using his... Considerable cloud. Also, Simon is the producer on The Martian. He, he his success extends out of the X Men universe. He wrote uh, and produced Mr. and Mrs. Smith way back when. Star Wars but, too. Star Wars, yeah, yeah. Rebels, and, yeah. and and he's got one of the solo films. So Simon is a ridiculously humble, totally cool guy. But um, I keep always thanking him, and he goes, Rob, Rob, Deadpool, great script, great talent behind the camera. It was a no brainer to push it through, and so they have. Uh, Really given the reins of the X Men to Simon, That's and so awesome. you you can see from First Class now that is the Simon Kinberg um, transition to now Simon is uh, is is one of the reasons that since Origins, so you go mm. Wolverine Origins, then a couple of years later is First Class, right? And so now that transition to the Kinberg area, and that's why these movies I cannot opinion, wait for X Men so Apocalypse. Better. It's going to be great. I cannot wait. Yeah, people forget. Hi, we have Jennifer Lawrence, we have Michael Fassbender, we have James McAvoy. Oh, we also have Oscar Isaacs. Right. Uh, I mean, it is packed. Loaded. Well, let, let me ask you this. So, talking about tone, is Deadpool now going to fit into the... I mean, we've got Colossus. Robert? I can't... I mean, because the X-Men are my Star movie. Trek. you got to see They're the movie. my Star yeah, Trek. Uh, look, there was no comic I favored more uh, growing up than the X-Men. The, the reason Deadpool exists, the reason Cable exists, is I was trying to make another Wolverine. And Wolverine is my favorite character in the history of comic books. He always will be. People always ask me. I'm like, no, no, no. It's not going to change. And it's never going to be you know, something I created. It's gonna be something that I loved as a kid. Right. And, and Wolverine was the, the character that I aspired to because he, he looked cool, he acted cool, and he had mystery. And that soap opera was what drew, drew totally. But I'm telling you right now, you're gonna see, X, you're gonna see Deadpool, and you're gonna see how he interacts. Because uh, again, people, people have not listened. Uh, for years, I've said Colossus is a major part of this movie. And he is, the, he is your direct link to uh, you know the X Men universe. Sure. So I, I really believe not that just the universe, but the actual core group of right. X Men. Oh yeah, and and uh, Brianna Hildebrand who plays Negasonic, she is fantastic. She is fantastic. And again, kudos to all these guys. There is no Deadpool story in comics with Negasonic, with uh, Angel Dust, um, that treats Ajax like this, with Colossus in this kind of mentor role. Right. I they mean, pulled from a lot of different characters. I believe Negasonic is Graham Morrison. It, it, so from, it's like from yeah. uh, from his run. Yeah, and from then his Angel amazing Dust run. is from Morlocks. But right. wisely, uh, and, and look, I'm gonna tell you, I created Vanessa as well as Deadpool, and I will tell you, as the creator of Vanessa and Deadpool, I never did them as good as this. This is so much better than anything that's been done with them in the Well, comics. it's gotta feel great they, as the guy who created them, well, you're like, you're watching they, them come to life on the, the screen. It's the benefit of history. They can look back and go, let's take this, let's take this, let's expand this. Mm. Um, the love story is why Deadpool is so great. And look, if you look back at great movies that we all love, I love Michael Mann's Last of the Weekends. There's a love story driving that entire narrative. Um, Deadpool has a great love story that is driving the narrative that is the 
is the reason you're going to be so invested and uh, laugh and and be like, whoa, they just did that. But I mean, Deadpool's on a mission, and 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 it has to do with a woman. And come on, those are great movies. Right. Those are right. great movies. I mean, Last of the Mohicans. Right. Come on. I'm a huge Michael Mann hey, fan, oh, too. Me too. I'm a big cobbler fan. I'm just out making shoes. That's the second Daniel time you've gone to the Adam Sandler place that's, here. No, no, not Adam Sandler. Daniel Day Lewis. He that's what he does to relax. He's a cobbler. Sorry. No, that's a, I, I miss that. Scene. No, no, I haven't seen that. I'm not going to see, see the Adam Sandler cobbler. No, no, I'm not, and I'm not gonna. <laughs> okay. But I like Adam Sandler <laughs> no, as the weird vampire in Transylvania. No. So go ahead. Well, would you like to see, given a choice, yeah, in, in the X universe, what are some of the characters in the X universe you'd love to see brought to life that we haven't seen yet? Wow. Uh, and please say Sugar Man. Uh, no. <laughs> I'm just kidding Look, about I, that. You know, I'm going to tell you right now, I think down the line, if, you, if, 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 if they were to put me in a room and say, what could we do next with the X-Men? I, I'm going to tell you, we already mentioned Grant Morrison. His first four issues, when he came on X-Men, and uh, is her name? Uh, Alex, Cassandra Nova. Cassandra Nova. Oh, my Nova. God. Cassandra Nova, dude. So amazing. <laughs> Giving yeah. a, a Xavier's sister oh my god and how ruthless yeah and when she's she beating him as there were head, children inside she gets in his head and lifts that gun to his temple and she's like this is what i can do to you at any time you're like oh my god yeah. you've never seen that kind of power the x-men are in such good shape there's so much material to mine right there incredible is incredible so amounts. much material cassandra so nova great. though that's yeah. a great that's call just, that's a great call that I revitalized the whole i want to see that now you're now, like i'm in that was good right off the top of your head there you go speaking of rob liefeld and his good ideas the spotlight this week is on rob liefeld I filled in his hey! good ideas. <laughs> I knew so, there was a, way, a reason I drove up here today. I love these transitions. Yeah. Um, this week's spotlight is on Rob Liefeld and his entire career. We're going to rock through it from Spider Man yeah, yeah, to yeah. X Force to Heroes Reborn, creating Cable and Deadpool and countless other characters to founding Image Comics and his own imprints. Awesome comics. And building a spaceship sweaty. for the 1994 and, San Diego Comic Con. That story. We're going to have that story, but let's let's get sweaty with Rob Liefeld. Let's right. start from let's the beginning. You were working in a comic book store. You're getting your, yep. your art down. Yep. What was your very first? Printed job, your first. Your oh first man, real probably job. in a in an independent comic called Megaton. Megaton Comics. They were published in Don Chicago. Don Simpson is that uh, the one? He did some okay. work for Megaton. That's Megaton Man. No, that's Megaton, Megaton Man. Man. Sorry. There's a publishing label called Megaton, and Eric Larson and myself both were first published wow. in, in Megaton. Got it. And uh, it was it was. Now, how did that happen? Uh, how did they I, find I, you? I, well, I was buying every possible publisher and submitting. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, here's here's something. Dark Horse. I think it's Boris the Bear number four. The last page is a full page pinup by Rob Liefeld to Boris the Bear. Nice. I drew it on the backing board at the comic store and I mailed it in and sent it in. And the guy who does, I forget his name, James, uh, whoever did Boris the Bear called me and said, hey man, it's pretty good. We're running it. And I've had people bring them up for me to sign recently and I'm like, wow, this is old. But it's a, I, I'm, it's, <laughs> I, I'm very proud. It's a great rendition of Boris the Bear. Nice. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I was going through indie comics because I was looking to get a break and there were a lot of them. And, you know, I had, uh, was developing a book called Youngblood with Megaton and those samples got in the hands of Mark Grunewald at Marvel, who hired me on the spot at the very first WonderCon in San Francisco. And uh, I was waiting for them to send me a plot while DC called me, because Dick Giordano had taken those same samples, and he told me on the spot at WonderCon, I'm not gonna look at these now, but I'm gonna look at them when he gets to New York, and I'll let you know. So they offered me work faster than Marvel, and I eventually got Hawk and Dove against B-list B, B, B characters were my favorite. Sure. And the Kiesels had a great uh, take on the characters. Yeah. And I was like, I was ready to rock and roll on this. I was a huge Teen Titans fan. I was a huge Hawk and Dove fan back from back in the day. And uh, I Ditko. Loved, I loved the female Dove that they had, you know, sure. proposed. And they let me design her. And, you know, but again, that was my first uh, foray into editorial conflicts because they literally, the editor was like, I had done four different designs of the new Dove with her hair flowing, and I wanted her hair to really create movement. And no hair, no hair. Has to have the same skull cap that the original one. So I'm like, so we're really, literally just doing Dove with boobs. And that's stupid. And the Kiesels came up alongside me and said, Rob's got a point. We like the ponytail version. And they pushed me through, but the editor was still like, I, I don't like this look. And you just go, man, does everything have to be so hard? Like, right. why is this so hard? Right. And uh, right. so in the middle of Hawk and Dove, I got a call from Marvel to come, and I, I thought I was being punked. Hey, Rob, this is Bob Harris. I knew what Bob Harris was. I read the X-Men. Right. We want you to come over and work with us in the X-Office. And I was like, oh, my God. I was right, like, yeah. this, this can't be happening. I'm oh, Rob, college. you're on the floor. I'm Rob. in college. Yeah. I'm in college for one year. And I'm going to go work in the X-Men office. Because like I said, that was my favorite. And they had offered me X-Factor. And I got to be honest, I, this is the advice that I would give young creators. Not every job is a job you should take. Because X-Factor was the original X-Men. 
And it, Walt Simonson was just ending his run. And I'm like, let's see, is following Walt Simonson a good idea for me? No, because I'm a new <laughs> talent and I'm going to get overshadowed by his great body of work. Well, they said, well, guess what? We, I mean, literally, my editor said, Rob, it's a good book. It sells good. You'll, you'll make good royalties. And I'm like, nope, not, not a good move. You, you have to manage yourself. You have to know like not everything is, is worth pursuing because it's not the right fit for you. And I've learned the hard way too. I thought I was a good fit later on for th things that I was not. But that turned into New Mutants for me. And they said, Rob, New Mutants is, is, is the dog in the line. The sails in the toilet. And we're going to turn the lights off unless, I mean, you can fill it with your own ideas and turn it around. And I asked if I could create a new teacher for them. Because at the time, Magneto was leaving the book. He had been the teacher. But they had been in Asgard for like a year prior to me taking over. And I got to be honest, the New Mutants book was kind of silly. It was silly at a character named Birdbrain. Uh, Warlock was goofy. It, it, as a fan, I was least invested in it. So they let me introduce Cable. And the only fight on that was right before we were going to press. They were like, Rob, we think we should call him Commander X. And I'm like, that's the dumbest thing I ever heard. <laughs> and if you're going to call him Commander X, I'm pulling him. I haven't signed the deal yet, so I'm going to hold him. And, and again, you're like, the voice, Rob, what are you doing? You're 21 years old. You're staring down Marvel. And, like, and, and then they said, okay, Cable's fine. Cable's fine. And I'm like, okay, because to me, he was Cable. And Where'd you come up with that name? It just cool sounding name. I mean, I just had a way with names, man. And I had a list, you know, cable sounds oh, immediately. Guy walks in cable, tough guy. You, you know, you don't want to mess with cable. He's not right. a small commander X. <laughs> Where's your spaceship? Yes. <laughs> kind of like some Jetson it's, sound it effects. It sounded like a reject of a GI Joe character. Yeah, right. Uh, uh, commander X with GI Joe. I mean, I, I was just like, this is bad. So cable and they let me run with cable. And, and let me tell you something. It was very exciting. Uh, my first issue with Cable is my second issue of, of the, my first issue of New Mutants. They were wrapping up a uh, crossover story along Acts of Vengeance, an Avengers crossover. <laughs> but then with 87, uh, there's 11 new characters that I created in that issue alone. Uh, Tender Villains and, uh, and Cable. And we blew the doors off. Uh, our sales, the issue after that, went up about 50,000. And by the time we were about nine months in, we had gone from 100,000 before I was hired 100 to now we were at about 450, 500,000. We were now wow. keeping up and we were the second best selling X-Men book. Mm. And so I started lobbying. It's not the New Mutants anymore. Let's get that X, because that X meant something. That X meant something to fans. And I wanted that in the title. And they were like, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll consider this. We'll take this under consideration. Meanwhile, Rob, we're gonna let you write the book. We're gonna give you the free reigns. And I tell people, a lot of characters I created, they don't make it to the cover. Cable was on the cover. He, his arrival had to be announced on the cover. The, my first issue was 98. Now I'm writing the book. I'm, and, and here's the deal, I, I want this very clear. Now they have editorial retreats. My heroes were Walt Simonson, Frank Miller, John Byrne. They did their own thing in their own little castles. Right. And I was in Orange County, California, creating the New Mutants, creating all these characters, and they just let me go. And, and, and like, I, I, I gotta be honest, it would be a lie to say otherwise. I had the Midas touch. I, I was, I would, from Hawk and Dove to New Mutants, it was working. And you right. can feel, and, and one of the reasons it was working, everybody that me and my peers were replacing, everyone was kind of long in the tooth. Right. And we were the new generation. I grew up with music videos all day long, quick cuts, different editing style, and a faster you know, pace. And that's how I presented my pages, and that's how I approached my work. But New Mutants 98, Deadpool, Domino, Gideon, and the team's reacting to them, and it's like, here's the new players in this saga that we're out, that we're, that we're putting together. And I gotta be honest, I, I was a little nervous. They gave me everything I wanted. Sure. Okay, Rob, it's your show now. Right. Uh, and you go, how do I top this? And how do you top it is you have the guy that you built up all year long, Cable, and he, he, he turned the New Mutants into a fighting force. You have Deadpool walk right in and take them all down. Nothing says to the reader, oh, this guy's a badass. Then, hi, I'm in red and black. My name's Deadpool, and I just took you all down in five pages. And, you know, then the character of Domino takes him down in her arrival, but we found out a year later, and the, the greatest compliment, I was in New York City at New York Comic Con uh, about five months ago, and Fabian and I were signing, and he said, I gotta tell you something, man. We were in between like uh, the, the line, and, and he said, that bomb you dropped with Vanessa, that Domino wasn't Domino for a year, and she was really, and I was like, that made me like feel good, because I was in Orange County, man, and <laughs> this is what Marvel didn't go, good job, Rob, I was watching, for the ninth time, the history of the Eagles uh, it, it, since Glenn died, I've been very depressed. And I watched that again this weekend. And when uh, Glenn Fry said, and Don Henley, they both go, you know, you'd think in the, infrastructure, in, in the infrastructure of the music business, when you sell 18 million copies, they'd call you up and go, you guys are kicking ass. We're gonna give you some more royalties. That's right. not how it works. No. No. Nobody would ever call me and tell me, they would just call me, like with Deadpool, one week after the book hit. 
and said, Rob, can you put Deadpool in the next book? I said, what are you talking about? I, I, I just sent that off the next book. It's arriving tomorrow. Marvel, you couldn't do overnight. You had to do two-day Federal Express. And I'm like, the rest of the book's coming. It's, it's done. I'm on to issue 100. And, and I go, why? And Bob goes, well, uh, D -D Deadpool uh, has been received phenomenally well. It is the most male we've gotten on a new character in 15 years. And he said, Rob, can you put him in issue 100? And I'm like, I don't know how. That's mm. packed. I just introduced Shatterstar and Feral and Warpath. And Do like, we're packed. And he's like, Okay, all right, all right, we, we, need to, we need to have him in X-Force 1. I go, that, that we can do. And that's why I tell people, Cable and X-Force built this juggernaut, but if you bought X-Force number one, you got a Deadpool card. And he got a Deadpool, he got a page all his own in the end. And then I tell people, from attrition, from sales one of X-Force to X-Force 2, X-Force 5 million, X-Force 2, 1.5 million, who's on the cover? Is X-Force on the cover? No, Deadpool's on the cover. And who's in the first 10 pages? Deadpool. And it's because fans demanded him. The fans have always, and, and, and look, I'm a creator who wants to um, please my, 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 my readers mm -hmm. and sell more books. And you know, the, the thing is, Todd McFarlane and Jim Lee were on both sides of me. And Todd had, uh, had Spider-Man, right. his, his thousand pound gorilla. And Jim Lee had Wolverine and the X-Men, his thousand pound gorilla. And I was like, crikey! How do I get out of this one? Like, and how I got out of it was I created my own toys. And is the thing that I am the most uh, proud of was like, I will see your Wolverine with a cable and I will see your Spider-Man with a Deadpool and I will match you. And I remember one of them telling me on the phone, what the hell is an X-Force? Like, that's not- That sounds gonna, like Todd McFarlane. Oh, uh, sorry. Bing bong. Well, what, what the hell is an X-Force? <laughs> that's not gonna sell. And I'm like, uh, we were very competitive. Sure. And if we could mind game each other. And, and so it was pretty ruthless. Wait, 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 let's let's get into this a little. So you said you your first comic was with uh, with Eric Larson on Megaton. Yes, yes. Did you know Eric? Were you guys just pals we met, we in met San Fran at or? Chicago Comic Con? Okay. Uh, my my parents, my dad took a job my senior year in Chicago, so I went there and I went to my first Chicago Comic Con, and that was even more uh, exciting than the. What year was that? Uh, Nineteen eighty five, and so I meet Eric Larson, and then Eric Larson is the one I'm hanging out with when Todd McFarlane approaches us at the Comic Con, and he says. Liefeld Larson. I got to meet two more of the L boys. And I'm like, the L boys? <laughs> and he's like, Larson, Liefeld, Lee, Lim. <laughs> You're not breaking in unless you got an L in your name today. And I'm like, that's weird. But he's weird. And he thinks weird. And you go, so and so I've always been like, woo, L boy. Um, so I think how many of the L boys made it to the image? Uh, Lee, Larson, Liefeld. But uh, so, so, so look, we were very competitive. And that first night I told, uh, there's an entire evening from that meeting with Todd, we never separated for about 12 hours. Right. Myself, Eric Larson, and Todd. And we would go up the elevator, we wouldn't know, and he would be, he would be mind gaming us then. Oh, oh you man. guys are rooks, you're rooks. I'm working on the details in the, in the corner of the windowsill and the extra bricks, and you're lining up eyes and nose and hair. Oh, I done that. And you're like, this guy's mind gaming me. He's oh, like, man. you're you're like behind the learning curve. I'm doing the extras because I'm not on the learning curve. And I was like, this guy's crazy psycho, and I love him. He, uh -huh. He's like, what more do you have to say? But you know, part of Deadpool was because Eric Larson now is on Spider-Man and Todd's on Spider-Man, and they'd be like, yeah, I'm done for the day. I uh, I drew two Spider-Man pages a day. Uh, they're both splash pages. A big oval, two big eyes. Oh, I'm done. Okay, good lunch. Next. Uh, Spider-Man, big oval, big eyes. And I'm like, those bastards, they are. And, and, and one of them had said, and you're drawing 12 kids in a mansion. Have fun with that. And I'm like, this sucks. Like, and, and literally, solo books, team books. So I was like, my, also, Deadpool was, was created out of some convenience. That costume is ridiculously easy to draw. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, at some point you got to so you, you, gotta have you some kind of started this, uh, the patches and the, and the, the shoulder pads, the shoulder pads, and the pouches. And, yeah, and all the pouches. I love that stuff. Like, wh what was your influence on that? Because, uh, okay, SWAT, uh, G.I. Joe, all that stuff. And growing up, da -na -na, da -na -na. I, anyone, they come to me with pouches. Kids and I said, are going, wait, I said, what was that? SWAT was a TV yeah. show. Theme from SWAT, uh, look it up. I, I'm, yeah. I'm referencing SWAT, which was a 70s. Uh, TV show. I think it was only one season, though. But um, it's it's great. I have it on DVD. Hondo and, 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 Deacon, oh, Street, Hondo Deacon, Luca. And, the, and there was the sniper. <laughs> there was the guy who rappelled down the building. They were the tactical force. And but if you Google right Rhythm now, Heritage, if you Google theme song. right now, SWAT mm -hmm. or Army, sure. those guys are packed with pouches. Totally. I saw 13 hours, and when they all get together, the seals. What are they going to fight with? Pouches. They're all lots of pouches. Sure. Where do you put the crap? Okay, <laughs> yes. Batman. Pouches, right. okay. So I, I liked them. Nice. I like, I like utility belts 
and um and homemade guns. And literally, Jim Lee was doing the Punisher at the time, and he would get a lot of armed services guys. We would sit together, the L Boys, and uh, and, and and he'd be waiting in line. I want to see a movie dude, called The L Boys. Dude, there was these guys with tattoos, all these Marines. Jim Lee, I love your work, man. I love all the detail and how you drew that rifle exactly out of guns and ammo. And I'm like, shoot me if I have to draw one of those rifles. And so I was like, okay, Cable is going to have giant Jack Kirby vacuum cleaner guns that right? I make up in my head because I'm not looking at no guns and ammo. And he's a mutant. He shouldn't be shot shooting bullets. He should be channeling his energy and yeah, shooting, shooting lasers. So, yeah. So, but look, New Mutants and X Force carried me, uh, kept me in the game. Uh, Gave, and, and, and people love that soap opera. And, and so let's, we, let's take that. Let's move forward. Yes. All of a sudden, you got Image coming up. You what? mentioned toys. Well, yeah. I'll, I'll tell you what happened. They said, Rob, our second line of X-Men toys, our second line, we just released the first line of X-Men toys ever. There's never, And that was Cyclops, Wolverine, Colossus, the standard. And they said, the second line is going to be X-Force. And I'm like, you're skipping 30 years and going straight to me? And the guy who ran Toy Biz, Avi Arad, said, you make hardware with software. I like it. And I to this day I go, I think what you meant was I give them gear. I think that that's what I heard. I give them shoulder pads and toy stuff that sure. you can play with. And I knew because there was 16 cable action figures and there was 10 Deadpool action figures. That first cable figure was really cool. It was. It, was great. it, it looked great. Yeah. I love and, that figure. And, and so that's when, John, I said, you got to be in the mind of a 22-year-old kid who loves toys. Plastic toys do things to us. Look at Todd. All he does is plastic toys now. Toys have a thing with cartoonists. We do something with these toys. And I was like, they're making toys of my stuff. And I, I remember, I literally was like, in my studio alone, I'm a toy designer. And, and, and then I was like, I must own my next toys. And that was like the impetus yeah. of like, and here's the deal. People ask me like, for me, after doing two years on New Mutants and X-Force, going to do the Fantastic, Fantastic Four, which I loved, any of the Marvel stuff, it was not going, it would have been a, I had kind of reached the peak of what I was doing at Marvel. Sure. And the next logical step was do something <clears throat> my own. Because right. like I told you, I had made all these toys in the toy box and they had carried me forward and, 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 and given me the success. And people really thought that like, again, I, I, I kind of had a connection with the fans and I saw it. I did store signings in each one. There's more people, there's more people, there's more sales. And so I started Image Comics. But before you buddies. started Image, this is 1990, <laughs> roughly. 1990, 1991. But before you started, like you're you're doing Marvel books, yes, and all your, all these other guys are doing a ton yeah. of other Marvel yeah. books. What was the what was the field like? If you went out, you went to a convention in 1990. You saw other create, you know, there was Nexus. There were other people who were like sure. small press who yes. who owned their. Like, I don't know if they owned their own characters from, from Wendy Peeney and Elfquest <clears throat> to Rude and Baron with yeah. Badger and Nexus. No, 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 <clears throat> those were aspirational comics to me. I'm like, they own it. There's ownership there. And Eric Larson <clears throat> and Jim Valentino and I had talked about going on our own. Right. Because we kind of all came from, even if it was brief, in a love of independent comics. And then when we proposed it to Todd, Todd came around pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, Mark Silvestri came around pretty quickly. Jim Lee uh, was the most favored son at Marvel. I, as I understand it, they made an emergency last ditch effort meeting they flew all out and they tried to keep him from coming with us right. and i do think that there are days because i saw the look on jim's face sometimes like what have i gotten into jim is very focused he's very controlled and he was with nutbags i mean it, it, when i was you know i was doing an interview earlier today and, and i was talking to this lady and i said when i was young in my 20s and i wanted to fight with everybody you want to fight let's fight let's fight let's have it out let's have an argument i i wanted conflict it, it it's what i it's what i survived on mm -hmm. it, it 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 drove me and then about 10 years later i'm like i'm so tired of fighting right. I've, I've picked too many fights <laughs> i'm so exhausted oh, yeah. like i can't fight anymore well what about uh, as an artist i mean you obviously love the comic book yeah. medium you're self-taught when you started then designing toys right did that become your primary concern did it overshadow your work as, a, as an artist no no i i, I just I, no I, I i just whenever i approach the page and I'll, I'll be honest, I can tell your, your, your viewers, uh, I 100% know I am a better artist every year that I draw. I, I got in very young and I've always strived to improve my craft. And uh, I know, I, and, and fans tell me, life, your stuff's never been better. I, there are guys who I absolutely worshiped that I do not know why. I, right now they produce work and I'm like, you're nothing like the artist I bought into. Then there's guys, I'll go back to Walt Simonson, who does not look like he ages at all. And, and stuff and, just gets and, better. Oh, 
I mean, just fantastic. He, he still, you would not know that he is not still in his prime. He is so consistent. And, and there's guys, Perez still puts all of his effort in, mm-hmm. in it. Totally. His, Perez's eyes have given him some problem, but you would never know it from the sketches and the, and the no. pages that he produces. So I'm, I'm always trying to stay at the forefront. My, when, the, when I'm drawing a page, my, my focus is on the page and creating the most powerful page. Uh, right now I'm doing a Deadpool graphic novel, and I'm doing it in the, with the knowledge of this movie coming out. And I told the writers, I told everybody, thank you for inspiring me to do to work harder and mm-hmm. make a better product. And I definitely uh, ha- have the benefit of going, okay, this is what they did. I think I think this is more of a direction to go in with a Deadpool product. And right now, the Marvel, the product that Marvel's putting out is the best Deadpool product they've, they've put out in the last decade. It's, it's top-notch stuff. But I did not go into it designing toys. I I, sure. I, I just knew, like like the Youngblood or in the back. Like I said, I was I was trying to publish Youngwood before I broke into comics. Sure. So when I I'm like, well, I'm gonna do these characters. <clears throat> right. And, right. and they're uh, like your high school. But I just yeah. think you know you were young and suddenly you were swept up in this. You guys were rock stars. Yeah. Right. I mean, when, you did when, a, what was it Lee's or Levi's? Was that, it? that was a complete accident? But it 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 didn't hurt. Well, yeah. It was Lee's or Levi's. It was Levi's. Levi's. Right? Levi's. Yeah, right. And Spike yeah, yeah, yeah. Lee directed Spike that. Lee right? directed that. We spot? should we should stop and say that you were in <laughs> you were the subject of a Spike Lee directed Levi's commercial. You can see circa that. Ninety four. Go online right now. Top. Rob Liefeld, Levi's, YouTube. But that's the thing. I mean, how do you as a young man, you know, being a comic fan, suddenly you've got money, you've got fame, you've got all this, you've got now an an industry behind you. How was that? How do you navigate that? I'll tell you right now because you're never not that insecure comic book artist. And what I mean by that is I'm only as good as my next job. Right. And Deadpool, Cable, X-Force, Youngblood Image, all that meant was I get to draw comics tomorrow. (laughs) I mean, it's literally oh, okay. like I got some job security. I got. We're comic book artists. We're, we're not. We're, we're not captains of industry. I'm not creating a smartphone. I'm drawn. I'm competing with my fellow comic book artists, and everybody was refining their look. I remember Mark Silvestri and I were sitting in the Image Tent. They gave us an Image Tent at Chicago. To, to th- there was the Chicago Comic Con, and then then there was an Image Tent that ten thousand people were attending. Like, and you could go in and out of the con, which is in the hotel. But then you came into the tent, and I did a twenty-four hour signing. A 24-hour wow. signing, and 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 Mark Silvestri in the, in the downtown. How'd your hand not fall it, off? Uh, you know what? I was young. When you're young <laughs> right. and stupid, you're like 24-hour signing sounds good. Uh-huh. Um, and and I literally I was like 18 hours in, and I'm like, I'm doing okay. I'm doing. It. Then I, n- hour number 19. Oh, I can't do this. But I mean, Mark Silvestri said he like was totally relaxed in his recliner, and I Mark is a fantastic illustrator. Yeah, he's yeah. great. And um, but I think Mark had gotten bored. My own personal opinion in the, in the 90s. And Mark looked over to me, and he goes, I figured you out, man. I figured out what you're doing. And then he pulled out some pages of Cyberforce, and I go, oh my gosh, I'm sunk. He's taken my layout kind of approach to the page with his superior illustration skills. And I'm like, I got work to do. <laughs> and when he, he threw down some drawings of Ripclaw, I'm like, this is a look like Wolverine. Like what the work he was doing on Wolverine. Right. He had settled into... Um, uh, again, being a student, he was really influenced by Mike Mignola's Cosmic Odyssey. Totally. And he had suddenly thrown heavy shadows. And Mark was fantastic at it, but it's also not what the kids wanted. And that, it, trust me, Todd would always, this is not what the kids want. Um, and, and look. Although so, Cosmic Odyssey was really cool. Cosmic, Cosmic Odyssey, Odyssey was, was cool. Cosmic Odyssey was cool. Dude, he did, epic, Mike Mignola epic. used to draw little feet too. Yeah. Yeah, so. <laughs> no, he hid them, but yeah. he got away with it. I yeah. somehow was. And you when get, I tried, you, get, you why, get ganked on it all no, the time. No, no. no. I was inspired by him hiding them on the mound. This Everything is, is on the mound. Yeah. But again, <laughs> no, yeah, but and that, take, I love Cosmic I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you John, that I, I said to one reporter, I said, we were done with the interview, and I'm like, are we not gonna talk about me being controversial? Because I like that. I, I like being controversial. <laughs> I'm not, it doesn't bother me. Polarizing is good. It's worked for me because it keeps you kind of in the, in the picture. Well, There's some dudes who I came up with who have faded into nothing because they were born. Sure. And rather well, that happens. I think that happens with so many different, like, look, I mean, Stan Lee and Jack Kirby created yeah. so many characters in their first, like, 10 years. And then maybe, maybe some of them, I mean, Kirby, that's a hard one to, like, because a lot of those stuck around. Oh. But look, look, you know, you could say, well, his Sandman didn't work. Yeah. You know, you could look, you could point to a couple ones, like, oh, Atlas didn't work. Yes. You know, there were a lot of those one shots where he's like, I was forced to come up with this, whatever. But let's move on. Let's, let's, uh, we're going to get to these Twitter questions. We're at the hour great, and a half great, mark. So great. I want to rock forward. Fantastic. But I want to cover a couple things more in your history um so image you came up with the name all seven of you guys come on yeah explode the design the logo 
industry explodes. Right. Yeah. Everybody's buying Spawn, Youngblood. Yeah. Then you guys start. You guys started like it became a bit of a factory because you're like, look, we're making stuff. Let's get some other it, young. I actually people would in. tell you it wasn't a factory, but it, it, I was trying to give breaks to young artists and give them this, the, the the conditions I didn't have. Because it's it's lonely drawing comics. I just when I say factory, I okay. just mean that each of but you yeah, guys had like we, three or four right. things for, for going me, on. See, and you got I'll, I'll be honest. The gun shot that went off was young, but came out and it sold number one. It, sold, it was it was Huge. sold a million. I, I'm like Trump. It was number one. I was winning. But um, but that, that <laughs> young wood came out. It was very successful, and there were not a lot of blood characters. Young blood. Sure. And, right. And then that summer, so young blood hits number one in March. The DC and Marvel both go back in time, 1992, their summer events, both of their annuals. It was weird. It was like they, they conspired. Bloodlines from Marvel and New Blood from uh, DC. And you're like, oh crap, they're after me. Wow. I'm on the radar. And so that's where I was like, I gotta get all my, I gotta get all my ideas out now. Right. I gotta get all my ideas and my characters because they're coming for me. And my names and my characters are everything to me. So that's that was a bit of a, like, they spooked me with, Bloodlines, new blood. I'm like, how about no blood? You didn't have any of this blood <laughs> hey, a year ago. You just came up with a character right there, no blood. Yeah, I want to so see that character. He's going to be in the sequel to uh, What We Do in the Shadows. But but um, <laughs> but also, wasn't Marvel and DC? They started to flood the market with like yes. a ton yes. of like kind of like secondary. Like they were just they were doing yes. they were afraid because you guys were actually making an impact. Uh, but then like Valentino started doing the die cut covers with Shadowhawk well, and all that. Here's, stuff here's what you guys started. don't know. Uh, uh, here's 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 hopefully your viewers enjoy this. This is a great story. We had the head of the printing corporation. Marvel, DC, and Image were all printing at one giant printer in Canada. And we were like the influx of, you gotta remember, we were the number two comic company with eight comics in August of 1992. That's the shot her around the world. We jumped over Superman and Batman, and that DC had, had like a cardiac arrest. Sure. Like, oh, what the heck? These punks. The eight comics, they published 60, we published eight, we were number two. Right. I, I'm doing the trouble. <laughs> I was number two. Um, so the thing is, the thing is, uh, the printer guy, here's, here's where some of that came from. They would come to make visits to us, and the head guy, he talks to friends. Oh, how are you doing? We have so many new applications for covers. Ah. Look at this glow in the dark. Here you go, and and we can die cut. And 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 he kept putting samples on the table. We didn't call this guy up, but he was savvy. He's like, I right. want the business. And right. dude, he literally threw me. He goes, and this is some experiment we're doing with thermal ink. And he throws it. And he goes, Are you familiar with the T-shirts? If you touch them, the ink disappears. And he goes, The ink disappears if heat is applied to it. And I said, Are you kidding me? And then I said, I could make blood stains on a cover and, and, and it would rub off and they did a sample and I'm like, oh crap. So blood strike number one, rub the blood. And the blood stains, the best thing you can do if you have one of those and you haven't done this in 20 years, take your, it still works, blood strike, throw it down, put a, it has, it has like 10 blood splatters on the cover, hit it with a blow dryer, they all vanish inst instantaneously. Wow. Then you turn the bl blow dryer off and they reappear. They come I mean, back. So we had magic peddlers. They're like, <laughs> totally. this is our magic <laughs> printing. And so that's when Valentino goes, I'm doing the die cut. I'm doing it. Right. And, uh, and, and you know, it's like everybody was like trying to one up. And Valiant also was like, give us whatever you want because others, and they had bloodshot. Other yes, right. oh, come and, on. and also they had the weird chromium like <laughs> yeah, die cut. Trust in, me, in there were publishers stuff, yeah. that believed that uh, that they could that the sales were completely tied to the gimmick. Mm. We felt like we had a connection based on our talent and our you know yeah. those fans had propelled us forward. We definitely bit off more than we could chew. We be definitely bit off more than we could chew. So I'm sorry to interrupt you. No, but no, no. Just no. to answer the di all the covers, you got to understand the guy from Quebecor, also known as Ronald Printing. Uh, they, they called it both. He, he would come visit us every four weeks. Here's my new stuff. Oh, man. So, well, hey, you can't, you, uh, uh, you get a cast store. on that. You get, yeah, you're like, well, that I makes want sense. Account. I mean, now, now yeah. I understand. I mean, yeah. and, and by the way, I have to say at first, as a buyer, yeah. I used to love that stuff. Yeah. I'd come in and it was like, oh, that's interesting. Of course, you'd have to buy two at least because yeah. you couldn't touch one. <laughs> no. You didn't want to. <laughs> right, right. And he's in yeah, case. Pull and, one away. Well, this, is, this is before they had CGC, which yes. is basically what I think is ruining the comic industry. But let's let's move on. I want to get through some more of your history before we hit these Twitter questions. So Image, we're going to we're gonna move forward faster. So Image and you, you guys, you had developed, I think it was called Maximum Press, is that right? Yeah, I had so some side labels. You had a couple of side they labels. They were my, uh, my, my escape clause. Yeah, so you're like, just in case, I'm going to yes. pop off a couple yes. things yes. here. 100%. And then 
you know, Image started to dissipate. I know, I mean, Image now is like an amazing yes. company that you're, uh, you're you you're still I tied still, in. I'm, I'm publishing books through them yeah, constantly. Yeah, Image is just, it's great. I they're mean, so many amazing legacy. things. I definitely want to talk, uh, that's a question in Twitter, so we'll get to that. But yeah. like, so then what prompted you to start Awesome? Well, look, Maximum Press, uh, look, there were there were a lot of dynamics going on if, within Image that I thought were a little funky. Um, and we were not close anymore. And we were all getting extremely competitive. Uh, people forget Mark Silvestri was part of Jim Lee's Homage Studios. They were all together. Mark, Jim, in the middle of the night, we got the call. Mark is now in LA and he's taken half the guys from Homage to form Top Cow. Okay. And that set up a competitive dynamic between Jim and between Mark. And if they tell uh, you that it didn't, they're lying to you. Right. Um, that, 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 it's easy to talk about this now with all this history, but we were all very competitive. Um, Todd would routinely chew us all out for our books being late and that his was on time. And that was a fantastic platform and he had every right to do it, but we were grown men and it didn't always go down the way it was intended. Then Marvel came to us, Jim, and, Jim Lee and myself, and offered us the Heroes Reborn deal. And that was where the final fissures were, uh, uh, you, you could see the, the, the cracks were visible. And it was uh, a lot of resentment. And there was, I remember uh, Comic-Con 1996. So all the image owners, we'd do our weekly, our, our yearly gathering in front of San Diego. And they went to the question and answers. And the first two questions are about Heroes Reborn. And Todd grabbed the mic and told everybody, we're not answering any of those damn questions. Jim and Rob have a Heroes Reborn panel later. You want to go to that? You talk to them and shut it all down. And there was, it was palpable. Mm. I mean, the, the, the tension was was wow. was thick. And so uh, I was told that my Maximum Press books had to be put back into image immediately. I told them no. That then spiraled everything. Mm. And again, the dates, everything's on my side. Sure. That, that there's stuff, Supreme and Youngwood were being put into Maximum Press. They were being put in the previous catalog. I was told that if I didn't do that, that I would be punished. And I'm like, I'm done. Like, we don't need, I, it was a dynamic, and again, you watch History of the Eagles, we were the Eagles. And, and Glenn Fry and Don Henley didn't always get along. Right. And some guys were sent to limbo. Uh, I mean, it, it's, it's what, what Don Henley says in that interview is very true, you can't have five alpha dogs. We had seven, went to six, and I think four was the number they settled on. Uh, Jim left shortly after I did, and uh, probably for the best. The, the tension was gone, the fighting was gone. I never held a grudge, I just wanted to do my own thing. Uh, I know it angered them because the guy who was running Image at the time, who we had hired, he said, Rob, you're 33% of our company. And, and if you leave, we have to, you know, shift a lot of, and again, because each book paid into the company. So it was, there was a lot of financial crap. I just wanted out. Let me tell you something. I loved the chances I gave everybody in my studio, but I found out very quickly because my door was always open. And I had a guy who had moved from Kansas with his wife to get inking gigs. And I mean, we had 20 books a month. We had pages available. But one point, I was about to go home, and he said, "Hey, uh, Rob, I, I moved out here, and you know we're kind of struggling. I know you guys are being generous with the work, but I was just wondering if there's any more work I could get because because you know, I'm having trouble putting food on the table. And I'm like, I paid this guy pretty well, but I'd go home, and my wife's like, What's wrong? I'm like, I'm just worried about giving this guy more work. I want to give him more work. And and I, I was not cut out to run a corporation because you do take everybody home with you right. and the success and the failure. And so, uh, awesome was a great." idea to streamline the books, cut it down to four books, because I really felt like the market was now, we don't want a bunch of spinoffs. Right. We want just quality. And what's better than Alan Moore and Jeff Loeb? And uh, so we did Fighting American, The Covenant, uh, Supreme, and Youngblood were the initial books, and Kaboom, which was a Loeb book. And we had great success. Jeff Matsuda. Uh, Jeff Matsuda, fantastic. He actually animated Deadpool in the uh, Hulk uh, Wolverine, when, when, when Origins was coming out, there was a direct-to-video Marvel did yeah. with Wolverine, Hulk, and Deadpool. And Matsuda called me up and said, Rob, I'm, I'm doing Deadpool. And he gave me an early screening. Right. And it was so awesome. You're like, I gave you your first job, and now you're letting me see Deadpool in a cartoon. It's so awesome. it's, now all these guys, all those guys at Extreme, they know how much I, I loved them. And I, and I mean, look, some of those guys, Jeff Matsuda, I don't think he, he will mind telling you. I, I paid him $800 a page. It's um, incredible. And because and, and, I wanted to share the love. I felt like I was making a lot, so I'm going to give you a lot. I'm going to incentivize all it's you amazing. And, and, and give it to you. But, Steve uh, Scrosi, yeah, you had Ian yeah. Churchill. You had, you had a lot of great talent. We had a lot of great guys. But, but Awesome died because I had an investor who straight up went tits up. Uh, and that morning said, I'm pulling and freezing the assets. And I was only able to oh. keep 
two books alive on my own. And so we continued Supreme right. for another year. Right. And I basically published every Alan Moore story and uh, continued Covenant. And then literally, I didn't work for three years. I retired. I, for, I, at that point in comics, that is the darkest point comics had. In, in 1999, not a single comic in a decade, we'd gone from selling millions to X-Men was selling under 100,000 copies. The number one book in the market was selling 99,000. And I literally was like, we're in some rough waters. Yeah. And my wife's like, what are we gonna do? Like, I said, I'm gonna have some fun for a while. I'm burned out. We went hard from like 1988 to 1999. And I just said, I'm gonna sit back and watch. And so I did not really, I think I did four issues of Wolverine, two of which are Deadpool centric. Uh, Marvel said, hey, can you help us out? Cause Steve Scross had gone from uh, uh, Youngblood to doing Wolverine, mm -hmm. but then they had to do the Matrix sequel. And right. he was the storyboard guy, so he right. left. And Marvel said, Rob, can you help us? Can you help us out on the schedule? Because we didn't plan on this. So I stepped in, to, to, and I thought that was the perfect way to say goodbye for a while, because those were top of the chart books. Uh, I, I, if, if I never came back to comics, I went out with Wolverine, who's my favorite character, uh, fighting Deadpool, and I retired for three years. And then honestly, Mark Miller came on the scene, and his authority was so was my favorite comic so great. in 10 years. I, th yeah. I, I, feel like I didn't feel about, a way about that comic since Claremont and Brown on Uncanny X-Men. I mean, he, but he followed Warren Ellis, and, and those I, 12 and, issues were fantastic. I thought Mark's were better. I love you, Warren. Mark's hit me on a different level, and part of it was Frank Quietly's oh, art, too. Incredible. You, know, you know what's interesting about those comics is they really brought the feeling of a widescreen yes. Hollywood movie yes. right. to the comic page in a very interesting way. And I remember even the, the first 12 issues, opening them up going, wow. Yeah. I mean, it was called The Authority, and you know, you had like this gay character who was one of the coolest characters yes. in the book, and it was like nothing Apollo I'd seen before. Apollo and Midnighter, and, yeah. And yeah. These, 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 um, these characters were not nice people. No, no. You they, know, were, nasty. they, they no. were complete, nasty, amoral, and I loved every page. And, and, yeah. and Mark Miller, as you know, his first story arc, he does all those Marvel creations. A yes. um, echo of the Avengers. Yeah, right. Giant ruthless. man gets his legs chopped off. And those... they rape uh, yeah. Midnight or Apollo, right? Yeah, yeah. Rough. Oh, yeah. And, and, and you go, this is like nothing. So I was talking to Mark online, and he was like, hey, Rob. Uh, it's great to talk to you. I'm a big fan. And I said, Mark, would you ever work with me? And he's like, I do it in a heartbeat. So we, he wrote a Youngblood series, and I did the first issue, and I was irresponsible, um, uh, as I have been sometimes. And then Marvel called and said, Rob, uh, we're doing a Cable Deadpool book. Can you do the covers to all those issues? I'm like, you don't have to ask me twice. And then basically they said, do you want to come back to X Force? And at this point, I said, I'm going to do a, I'm going to, I'm going to revisit everything I ever did. Uh, so, so 2000, I've been in the business about 12, 13 years. So now I'm going to, I honestly didn't know that those opportunities would be, be there for me. And so I did an X-Force series. I spun off Shatterstar. I did some Teen Titans. They called me up and said, we're going to celebrate Heroes Reborn and the 10 year anniversary. Do you and Loeb want to do something? I'm like, yeah. And, uh, so that was, you know, I, I really revisited all my old haunts, uh, over that last decade, and, mm -hmm. and whether it was Hawk and Dove, Onslaught Reborn, Deadpool Core, they said, hey, do you, do you wanna do a group of Deadpools? Do you wanna introduce? And I'm like, you mean I can, I can introduce Lady Deadpool? Done. I've always <laughs> thought a female Deadpool would be yeah. fantastic, and the fans loved her. And, and so, you know, I, I, I've, I have been extremely fortunate and uh, just tickled pink that I get to do comics. I mean, com I am a comic book artist. I don't make movies. Uh, I know one of the questions on Twitter, would you direct a Deadpool film? I, I don't direct movies. I direct pages. Um, and I, I, you know, so... Wait, so you, you, speaking yeah. of Twitter questions, we're, we're like, we're running really late, but okay, we're going to rock it. through these. I'll go fast. And they're all questions for Rob, so Rob, Thank handle you. them. Thank you. Twitter questions. Number one, we've got Wine101 asks, how did you feel about Wade Wilson's backstory? And was it told in the, how it was told in the original Wolverine Origins movie? Yeah, we covered that. Uh, yeah. They could have done a lot better. We'll okay. just leave it at that. <laughs> Second <laughs> question. We got Jerry Simons. Besides Deadpool, who's your favorite character that you created? Okay, uh, it's Cable. Uh, Cable. Like I said, you can't get to Deadpool without Cable. And Cable was the, he's the guy that kicked down the door for me in my career. And so I can't wait to see Cable in X-Force, the movie. Okay. okay. Or however they're going to rock this. Who should play Cable? Uh, you know, I'm not going to get into that. Uh, that's dangerous waters for me, guys. Uh, Ooh, that means know? they might already no, have no, someone no, cast. No, 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 they, no. There's no one cast. No? But I, I've realized, I've had people say, Rob, when you talk, 
you can ch- cause trouble. All right. And right. So well, you I, know, what, who do you, better question. Who would you like to see? I want to see the guy him? who is an avatar. That's of course. Okay. S- what's his name? L- uh, Lang. Stephen, Stephen Lang. Stephen Lang. Yeah. Stephen That's Lang. What I would love who, to see. Who, by the way, was actually in Manhunter, Michael Mann's yes. Manhunter, yes. Yes. playing Freddie Lowndes, the reporter that yeah. was turned into a female in, in Brian Fuller's version of Hannibal. But he's he. It, he was playing Cable in Avatar. Yeah, that's what I thought, too. Yeah. I thought, he's, he's Cable yeah, in he's Avatar. Basically he's cable. But okay. if it's not, okay. I'd like Dwayne Johnson, maybe. He'd be great if he didn't sign on to do... Uh, he's Shazam. Uh, the, he's the yeah. Shazam. Yeah, Black Adam. Adam. Sorry, I'd say, Dwayne. yeah, Stephen Lang would be awesome. All right, next question. We got Tanner, Lor- Tanner Roran asks, how depressed were you with the Deadpool in Wolverine Origins? <laughs> Look, here's the deal. He made it to screen. Yep. Uh, 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 there, it, was, it was a double-edged sword. Uh, it didn't live up to its potential, but it was a start, and I'm sticking with those three words. It, right on. Four, it was a start. It, it, was got, a start. it got it yep. started. Yep. Next question, we got Adam Boltimir asks, will we ever see Youngblood done as a movie or TV show? I know it was almost a cartoon a long time ago. Yeah, uh, you know what? That's very possible, and, and I would be lying to tell you if there's not a lot of interest in that right now. Nice. Next question is from Brenton Kelly asking, what surprised you most about the Deadpool movie? He's the only person on this panel who's seen uh, it yet. What surprised you the most if you could say it? In the, non-spoilery the, ways, I the, the combination of violence and humor is is uh, the, the 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 and the tone. I guess the tone is spectacular. They really nailed it. You'll see. You'll awesome. See. Next question comes from King Joker. Since Deadpool experienced time travel, could he introduce the new younger Wolverine to the cinematic universe? I, based on what I heard this week, I I don't think that's possible. All right. You know what 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 Simon and and Brian Singer said to the public how they don't envision recasting Hugh Jackman. Right, Hugh Jackman um, is Wolverine. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm like... That just, just means he can't retire. At, yeah, that means yeah, he can't yeah, retire. I know yeah. he's... T- I'm talking about Old man Logan. We're, we're unretiring him. Yeah, we're unretiring him. unretired. Yes. Come on, That's not fans. happening. Come on, Forget fans. it. All right, David Cutler asks the next question. Are you pleased with the real Stanley cameo in the Deadpool yes, movie? It, it is my favorite Stanley cameo because it's the funniest one. It's not because it's in Deadpool. If he did this in another movie, but it, he, he, it's because it's R-rated. Oh, it's, boy. It's, it's, and he's on record as saying it's his favorite, and you'll see. Awesome. All right, next question is Josh Klein. How great would it be if Deadpool does a spoof end credit sequence on screen because he can actually address the fans in the theaters? Woo, I'd say show up on February 11th when it opens. Yes. All right, good answer. Next question is from Screen Freak. What is your favorite superhero movie of all time, not including Deadpool? I have a soft spot for the rest of my life for the original Donner, Christopher Reeve, Superman. It is a perfect movie. Excellent. Stephen Humble, next question. It comes from Stephen Humble. Now that you've done Deadpool, what is your next creation that you'd love to see on the big screen? All of them. I'm not greedy. I'm not greedy. <laughs> All of them. All right. Next question comes from Jordan D. Mertens. I'm currently reading Paper Girls and loving it. What are some of the other image comic books that you're fondest of? I'm going to tell you right now, it's self-serving as hell, but Brandon Graham's Profit oh. is fantastic. I'm glad you it, brought that it up. It is one hell of a yarn. It is one of my Great favorite book. comics. They just yeah. brought, the, just this past Wednesday, they started a yeah. new run. I've been reading like I've been reading all of his interpretations yes. of your and it's great how he interpreted your characters through him like I think it's 10,000 years in the yes. future. You got Die Hard, you got all these different characters yep. in there. If you haven't checked out Profit by Graham Brandon Graham. Brandon, Brandon, Graham. Brandon Graham. He's an incredible. He also did King City. King this City. Other, he has yeah. a book called The Island. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, the he's thing a about, prolific the dude. The thing about Profit is we are going to our fifth printing on the first edition. Uh, trade paperback all the other editions have gone back three times it is a book that in trade mm. has just blown up and 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 it's his vision is fantastic i cannot recommend it enough check out profit get the trade or the comiXology right now yes. you will love it it's freaky super f- awesome science fiction heavy metal yep um next question comes from ploy asking what comic book movies is mr leafield or is it Liefeld? Liefeld, Liefeld. Sorry. Is I'm Mr. Liefeld most excited to see in 2016, apart from Deadpool? What other ones uh, are you most excited I, I, I'm about? I'm looking forward to all the ones we've talked about, but we haven't talked about the one that I'm looking forward to the most, and that's Doctor Strange. Yes. Doctor Strange, <laughs> I think, is going to blow people away. We, are both, oh, we, we have been talking about that Just on Movie that Talk today, that was my pick that, for the... the well, they were like, you what's go. your I was most driving here. Yeah. I couldn't have possibly Doctor seen Strange. that. Yeah. Marvel meets magic. Look out. Yeah, I can't Look wait. Out. Plus, how good does Benedict Cumberbatch look as the character? Come on, as we, and then the rest of the yeah. casting: Mads yeah. Mikkelsen. Yeah, I mean, uh, Tell and, uh, and Scott Derrickson is the Scott, director, right? Yeah, and I who's see. playing the Ancient One? Uh, uh, Amanda uh, Swilton. Uh, no, Tilda Swinton. Tilda Swinton. Thank you. I mean, the thing is, we talk about how our Lord Feige. 
Yes. You know, yes. Is, is our Lord and Savior. Yeah, he's great. Uh, you know, and... Uh, I, he, are they not making the best choices over there? I mean, they it's fantastic. Are knocking it I mean, out and of the to, park. to do Doctor Strange this way, I mean, I cannot wait to see the mindless ones. I'm that, all in that it. I want to see that. That trailer is my most anticipated trailer. Oh so. my God. When is that drop? I know. Tomorrow? All right. Matthew you. Jasso <laughs> asks What character did you love of your own that never got any traction? A character you created wow. that nobody noticed? That's a, um, you know, he, I tried to make Shatterstar happen a couple times, and uh, I'm not giving up yet. He's a great. Uh, he has a great fan base, fan base, but he is overshadowed by Cable, Domino, Deadpool. You know, sure, the ones that that did break through. Yeah, this is similar to what you're just saying on Profit. But what are your thoughts on the Image revival reboots of Glory and Profit? Oh, the, the, Joe Keating and Sophie Campbell. Uh, if you can get that, it's one of the most handsome I got coffee it. table trade it's hardcover collection of uh, Glory. That I'm. It's fantastic. We, we are once again to Profit do more and that. Glory. Yes. These are two adult science fiction stories yes. based on his creations that these artists really and writers talent, just yes. blew it we, out we of the We empowered them. We empowered yes. young talent to do whatever they wanted and it was the, the stuff they came up with is fantastic. And, and I'm not blowing smoke. Art. Those are two of my favorite they're, comics they're that come out recently. They're fantastic. All right, next question. Abraham asks, were a lot of jokes in the movie Improv from Ryan Reynolds himself? Yeah, I believe there is a heavy amount. I, I, I watched on set during uh, one scene uh, he tried a number of different jokes. So I think he approaches each scene and it's like, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. And look, he's playing opposite T.J. Miller. And oh. if you were at the Comic-Con panel, that went south fast because they uh. were both very naughty. Can I ask a question uh, just from a production yeah, sure, standpoint? Sure. Did they have to loop him? Is Ryan Reynolds' is most of the, the dialogue that they recorded on sure. set, was that the dialogue used in the film or did they have to go back and ADR a lot of it? Uh, I think... Because of the mask, yeah. You, you, the great thing, and I was telling my wife, I know one line was changed for certain, and I said it's the beauty of having a guy behind the mask. Right. He just right. ran another line, and they dubbed it in. Dubbed so it. that's I mean, it's, it's, it's that's the brilliance movie of the magic. Yeah. Sure. I was just curious because yeah. if they if they made it sure because that riffing is so well. Also, he's got some computer animated eyes. Too, yeah. One hundred percent. That's great. Last two questions. Last second to last is David Cutler asking, what sort of budget would you like an X Force film to have? Oh come on. Uh, okay, so now million. we're, we're, we're right. wishing. Right. Uh, I, I would just uh, uh, to pull it off. I don't know what what what. I mean, I don't want to be silly. I'd say uh, ninety four million. That'd be great. Yeah. I mean, uh, well, you if gotta, you're looking at Apocalypse, you're looking at two fifty maybe. Apo but Apocalypse has a lot of people. It has uh, a lot. Of people. Right. Well, who uh, would know, you like to go further in an X Force film? What would you like to see the plot? What what villains would you like? You to know see? what? There's a, there's a lot of great. Uh, y you can take a lot of different directions. What I. I think the team, I on Twitter and social media, what I get all the time is, uh, and, I, and I and all the questions that I was sent from you last night on Twitter. I mean, a lot of cables, a lot of dominoes, uh, Deadpool. I mean, th those are those are the prime movers and shakers that the fans. And again, I put it on Instagram today. Uh, people forget, and I because I've been doing a lot of interviews. X Force and X Force Two are the number one books. Uh, in the country, and X Force number one was the number one book of the year. It was the only as a single issue. It was the top book. The, the charts. I don't make those charts. I just lifted it and put it on my mm -hmm. Instagram. Um, when comics were selling the most and grabbing the most eyeballs, Cable and Deadpool were at the top. The the the, the Liefeld creations were grabbing a lot of attention. They were exposed. I love when people say to me, "Are you happy Deadpool's you know popular now?" And, and, and I'm like, in in a movie, yes. <laughs> yes but in comics, right. he was already he, really. Popular. He hasn't sniffed those numbers no. like in a, a long, long time. time. <laughs> so right. well, last question. It's the sweaty question of the week, and okay. it's from someone calling themselves T.J. Miller, asking for Mr. Liefeld. Where do you see the comic industry in ten years? How will the media change over the next decade? The, okay, I am looking to buy a comic store right now. And when you buy a comic store, you talk to your wife. And your wife says, why are you buying a comic store, Rob? And you say, <laughs> well, honey, uh, let's take this year's movies alone. And let's take this year's television shows. And it kind of comes out to uh, they're spending $2 billion a year making my childhood into uh, these lavish productions. And I've, I've, saw, I, I've been um, shadowing some stores. A uh, couple days a week, and I see what draws people off the streets. Mm -hmm. and, and and for instance, the, the reason the media is going to be in great shape. The answer to the question is the media is going to be in great shape because the formats are going to expand, whether it's digital or. And I really I, people aren't done with books yet. That was a myth mm -hmm. that people pe these collections in different formats, bigger books, bigger giant collectible collections. When Deadpool comes out in the theaters, Marvel has an entire fleet of Deadpool product for you to interact with. Right. Um, they have reprinted
about 10 of his first appearances. New Mutants 98 is a $600, $700 comic now, but you can buy it for 99 cents in exactly the same condition. Marvel's put that on the stands, and, 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 and as I understand it, they have stocked those well. Retailers keep going back. My, my local retailer ordered 200. He sold out. He got another 100 the next week. Uh, many different Deadpool appearances are available. The trades, uh, my nephew favors Deadpool in the Classics Illustrated that they did with Deadpool and Moby Dick. And I was like, huh, there really <laughs> is a Deadpool for everybody. And the kid, I did 19 tours last, right. 19 convention dates, and there many kids came up to me, I said, what's your favorite Deadpool? And they had their pop vinyl, this one, the bobblehead. Uh, there is, right now, you can go to Target at the end cap, and you can interact with all those kiddie products. They're in the kids section, like the young kids. And then on the way home when you're pumping gas, uh, you can go in and Deadpool is smiling from you from the Mike's Hard Liquor in the beer section. So you can give your kid a thing, uh, a nice little plushie, <laughs> and finish off the night with Deadpool. He is the spectrum. Now, if that keeps that kind of stuff keeps coming up, keep, keeps up with these characters, and, and I've just seen a glimpse of like the Civil War mer merchandising, I really believe people see these figures, they see these movies, and they want to know more. Mm -hmm. And it drives them back to the bookstore. Uh, we have one giant mega Barnes & Noble in my neighborhood. And I was sitting off to the, uh, the, the right the other night in one of their chairs reading a book, and I heard the lady at the store lead a group of people over, and she was explaining how many of these volumes were missing, and but she wasn't naming the book yet, and I knew it was coming, and it was Walking Dead. Mm. And these people are, and she said, I'm sorry, sir, we don't even get to buy these. They sell so fast. Because people want to keep up yeah. with this art form. And, and, and it's, it's great that a, a, a movie like Deadpool can shine the light on the comics, and will shine the light. And, and, and that's why the business... The, the, they're really merging. Can I suggest something when you open your comic book store? Uh -huh. Something that I saw in the Kick-Ass movie yeah. was, and it's always inspired me, and that's something I want to see because you mentioned Crocs and Brentanos or Borders or all yeah. these bookstores. There's no way to socially interact anymore unless oh, you go to a comic convention. So when you have that coffee shop yes. type of thing where kids just bought their comics and they could sit down, yes. have a drink, and talk about comics, Adults can talk about comics. You can have something where you can have tablets if yep. people want to buy their comicsology thing. I think that's the wave of the future is making an interactive comic book store that has a place that you can actually All right, John, sit we're, down. We're going to invest in a comic store. Well, together. which means <laughs> also, too, that have places that where people awesome. can that's... not just signings, but have like do these things, do yeah. events where, we, where oh, people yeah. can come by. And, and also, you know, one of the things that I've loved. The things I, I love my action figures. We, we're getting better action figures oh, now than, than we, ever than ever before. And you've got look sideshow toys. I don't talk about sideshow toys enough on the show. I'm always talking about hot toys. But sideshow toy sideshow toys or sideshowtoy.com is the American distributor for hot toys. They put out a fantastic Deadpool figure. They did. It is amazing. They it did is. the comic version of Deadpool. Yes, that is amazing. It came out in the last couple months. Gorgeous figure. Yes, and to be able to get two. The sideshow yeah, version yeah, and the Hot yeah, Toys yeah, version, yeah, yeah. right? You know, in the same year, in the same calendar. Right, I mean, got, we were hitting the two-hour mark. We got to wrap it up. I got to thank Rob. John, thank Leifel. you so much. Thank for you having so me. much for being here and talking about your Thanks history and like it's rocking very exciting. out. Thank you uh, very much. Thank awesome, you, sir. Awesome. Congratulations awesome. on the movie. Hey, thank too. guys, you're yeah. gonna love it. The, 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 you are gonna love it. You're gonna absolutely get it. Well, let me give some sign off, Rob. Okay, Robert Meyer Burnett. Where can people find you online? You can always find me on Instagram at RM Burnett or on Twitter, as we always go back and forth on Burnett RM, or find me on Facebook at Rob. Robert Meyer Burnett. And Rob Liefeld, where can people find you online? Um, on Instagram, I'm Rob Liefeld. Uh, on Twitter, I am Robert Liefeld. Uh, I have I have more followers than Rob Liefeld, who has a parody account. Huh. He's funny, but he's not real. And people, <laughs> I am Robert Liefeld on Twitter, so hit me up. Awesome, and uh, you guys can find me on, uh, on Twitter and Instagram, just at John Schnepp. You've been watching uh, Collider Heroes episode 43. Thanks for tuning in. You can check out my film, The Death of Superman Lives, What Happened, by going to tdoslwh.com and check out Deadpool. We're gonna be seeing it this week. You're gonna love it. I'll see you next week. Hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.